What's going on, everybody? This is uh, Duke with coming soon Jesus.org. We're at the uh, Current FM. That's Crystal. We're at Current FM, uh, WJLZ. We're going to be talking to you about a little bit about what we do. Uh, and just, uh, it's, it, this is an important program, broadcast. So uh, tell a friend, share, t- tell people we're on. Um, this is our, like our, our well, this is like our, our second first official uh, YouTube channel. I'm, I'm, an, I'm a loyalist. I was always doing Facebook, but I'm going to try to have it on Facebook uh, and YouTube. Uh, Crystal's on Coming Soon Jesus Teacher. So if you go to the Facebook page, you'll see Crystal's pretty face and not mine. Uh, and the idea is... Yeah, huh? It, where? where? Um, I'm trying to give it a good angle so that you guys can see us. Uh, at the same time, I don't know how to do that. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, so just bear with us. We're getting set up right now. We're going on air in about five minutes. But the camera's in your face. I mean, the the microphone's blocking you. So that's difficult. Let's see, try it over here. So can you guys see, see I cover you, since I'm moving here, I cover you, but it's all good. Uh, so right now we don't have any viewers, and that's okay. I don't expect a lot of people to, to be tuning in right now, uh, just because there's a new program, new broadcast. We talk about some intense stuff, trolls, I want to tell you about the trolls. I love you, you know, so uh, tell your atheist friend, this is a show where we're going to talk to atheists, your comments. If you're a Christian, there will be trolls on this broadcast, so don't... Uh, you know, don't be all sensitive and stuff. They're going to say stupid things, uh, but there's also people up here who are genuinely trying to learn something. So make sure that you are uh, not an oversensitive uh, jellyback Christian. Uh, make sure that you can you know, handle some stuff because uh, being oversensitive is not helping right now in this, this generation. So uh, just so you know about Crystal, she's... Uh, she is very opinionated, but but right down the middle on uh, the political screen, the Democrat, Republican, she's like um, right. I mean, right. I'm a little more conservative, I guess now. Is that what you think? Well, yeah, because uh, I don't know how to nicely say this, but that. I think um, the liberal agenda is getting ridiculous. I can't. So we we talk about everything. We're not afraid to talk about anything. So. Please, if you cannot handle it, do not watch this broadcast, I'm please. I'm a compassionate conservative, I think is what I mean. uh, and, and, and she wants to say compassionate, but, but when she gets going, y'all, I understand it is a wild ride. Um, I can't get Speaking to of that, why weren't you saying anything when I was talking to the Mother God people today? That was hilarious. I was like, bro, go. She's coming. The Mother God people were... Uh, Oh man! You were like you were just stay, sitting there, and I didn't say a word. I was trying to protect him, like get out of here. She's gonna eat you alive. I can't trying to tell out. me that Christ came back and was buried dead in the ground after he had cheated on his wife and his mistress, his mother, God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not my Jesus. Sorry. I cannot sign out. Um. I'm not gonna be able to make it in time. I can't get. I can't get. I need to be able to monitor to see what we're looking at, and I can't see. What? I'm gonna give you the the other one. Yeah, and I I can't sign. I don't know how to. Can you come in for a second? Oh, there it is. Never mind, I got it. Sorry.
trying to. Okay, I see it now. Should I stay in the opening? Yeah. What? Um, just tell everybody here. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, just say, just give the dial numbers. Okay. Right, boom. I just say vision casting. All right, so we're, let's see, they're going to do the, yeah. You got to go get your, you can't find a spot. <laughs> She's trying to find a spot to get us live. <laughs> I do that every single time. All right. So Crystal's late and she's here. That's hilarious. Where is she? How do you do this? Duke and the Gang, WJLZ, Current FM. Uh, we are officially trying our YouTube live show, so we're on YouTube live. If you want to check us out, Crystal is late, as always. It's on now. <laughs> no, I love it. I love giving her a hard time, guys. She's Crystal's the best. We are, uh, so we're trying to do this whole social media thing. We have not done a good job at building our social media. Sorry if you can't hear me that though. So we're trying to build our social media up, which is very difficult. Uh, but nevertheless, we've got to do it. So we're on... YouTube, just go to Coming Soon Jesus T-shirts. Uh, well, that well, Facebook, go to our Coming Soon Jesus page. Make sure you like us on Facebook because that helps us out a whole lot. Go to Coming Soon Jesus T-shirts on Facebook, uh, and you can see the program. You can actually see it from your phones on the phone. You guys know how this generation works. Um, so we're on Facebook, YouTube. We're gonna work on getting on Instagram. Uh, it's just hard to have a media device for everything, but Duke is just old. Duke is just old. Uh, it's true. Speaking of old, today's my sister's birthday. She is 104 years old. My big sister, uh, Dakisha White, or she's on Facebook as Key Cheney. Make sure you wish her a 240th birthday, a happy 240th birthday. She has turned 375. 
today. She's 375 years old. She invented the wheel, started fire. She's been a great asset to the uh, human species. So we thank you for all of your contributions, Keisha. One of the biggest ones is uh, babysitting me, which I have no idea how you survived that. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, there's that. So uh, we don't expect a big audience on our Facebook page, or I mean, our, our, our YouTube page right now, because no one knows that we're here. So that's fine. Uh, but we just wanted to try it out and see what's going on. So be uh, bear with us. Uh, it, we, we really have a good time. But what someone? we would like you to do is like our Coming Soon Jesus Facebook page. It's Coming Soon Jesus t-shirts. Yeah. T-shirts. And um, we have a lot of interesting stuff in there all the time. Duke is really interesting. He's so amazing and wonderful. That's her. That's her way of saying weird. That's that's. No one's buying that. You don't want to miss out. No one's buying that. Uh, if you want drama, we are definitely. We we are your people. We are your people for drama. Uh, not because we're just dramatic, but because we're just dramatic. <laughs> it's not like that for real. we. We actually have a good time. Uh, you know, just sharing the gospel, but talking about real things. Uh, we're more than just trying to make it practical. Uh, we encourage trolls. We want you. We want to engage. We encourage atheists. We want you to be a part of the show. Um, if you're going to... Now, listen, the people we don't want on this show are uh, really, really extra sensitive people who can't handle uh, bad language uh, things like that. That's not true. Well, that's no, because well, when we, we, a show like this, we are going to go, you know, like, we're dealing with a lot of things and, and a lot of atheists and a lot of people that don't share the same belief systems. So you really got to be a strong believer. You can't just be, you know, like, you know, oh, fooey. Like, I mean, we expect Christians to hold it down, but not everybody that listens to this show is a Christian uh, because... Because not everyone in the world is a Christian. So we need real Christians who are like warriors, who have a backbone, who aren't uh, like extremely overly sensitive. We need you to um, to kind of, you know, not be a wuss. You know, uh, don't be, be soft. We're, we're talking truth here. Um, so come on, people. Like we, we were asking to, for everybody to put their big boy pants on. Uh, big and girl pants on. Big girl pants on. Like, come on, we're, we're believers. Oh, yeah, let's not let's not Women be. Women are just as important as men. I did you really just go there? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is terrible. All right, so pin ministry. Go ahead and start with that. Pin. Everybody, well, anybody that listens at all knows how much I love pin ministries. Um, pin stands for people in need, and they really help people in need. It's a ministry out of Beach Church in Virginia Beach, just a few blocks from the ocean front. And every week they feed the homeless, um, provide tents and book bags, and um, give them free medical care. Without them, a lot of times people have no medical care whatsoever. Like somebody came in today and said, you know, their benefits hasn't started, and they're, you know, they're in a lot of pain and they need help, and um, you know, just anything like, you know there's infections that you know women deal with just a lot of different things that they can come in there and get help and get relief um, there's real doctors in there and um, it's just it's amazing on top of the medical they also get clothing everything you know in the winter a lot of people um, that are homeless can't afford a coat of course or the really poor um, adults will come in and get coats and long johns and blankets and um, socks and underwear and things we take for granted every day. They also have them in AA meetings. They put them through classes to help them get on their feet, not just um, constantly receiving, but they also encourage them to volunteer and help out. They help them get jobs every single week because I work in the clothing. People come in and say they need, you know, outfits because um, they have a job interview and they need shoes or you know, um, they need a haircut, they need something, and we help them every single week. They have hygiene, all of their hygiene needs are met. They also have church service for them, and it's not just on Sunday. On Saturday morning, they feed them breakfast and love on them. They also do it a few times a week. Whenever they need anything, um, 
people in pins show up, then that's why it's called people in need. And you can volunteer. They always need volunteers. They need, of course, money. It's a nonprofit. Um, you can go to um, pin.org. That's P I N or PIN ministry.org, I'm sorry, um, PIN ministry.org, and you can donate or sign up to volunteer, um, pray for them. There's so many different things that you can do to get involved with this organization. They work with local shelters to um, help people all year round. It's not just a seasonal thing. They're there 52 weeks a year. They, they were there on Christmas Day. Um, they never become too busy to help. and. I love this organization with all my heart. So um, if you love the homeless, have a heart for it, of course you can volunteer or you can donate at www.penministry.org. That's about it. And uh, I was going to say, this ministry has been feeding and helping the homeless for so long. I'm so proud of them, uh, what they do. Uh, and, and they have wonderful hearts, like everybody that runs it. Yeah has wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hearts. Like, it's um, every, it's run from love. Like, Your head is chopped off on this video. Oh, it's I'm hilarious. Sorry. It's it's like I can see, like, your nose in up. It's so funny. It's just like a talking nose. Ha <laughs> ha! I turned the camera around. Yeah. Um, Pin Ministries is such a special there ministry because everyone talks about what the church should be doing and things like that. It's like, okay... We want to keep that in perspective. There are many ministries out there that are doing uh, things the right way. They're doing church the right way. They're sharing the gospel. So, uh, listen, I don't play around with people's souls and life. So, if you're a church that's jacking up and doing dumb stuff, I'm going to call you out on it. I'm going to, uh, not that I'm just calling you out, but it's like people's souls are on the line. The Bible talks about being stumbling blocks. However, at the same time, you got to be bold enough to give. Uh, credit to the churches that are doing it right. right. It, the and, thing about Penn, they're yeah. a light. Like, they really are a light because it doesn't matter if, you know, the person's atheist or that they just got out of jail or they've been on drugs. It doesn't matter. They just love them and they help as they can. And um, that's what I absolutely love about it. And what gets me, though, is so many people that come in there, and I've said this before, that have nothing. They live on the streets. They live in shelters. They have, like, the only clothing they have is what we give them. Um, they're hungry a lot of the times. And they come, and there's a church service every Sunday for them. And they are in there worshiping. And they are so grateful. that They're always, you know, God bless. I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful to be here. And we complain every day about so much stuff. But, yeah, you know, a lot of us, or most of us, have a place to live. And we have a car. And we have people to love us. And... Um, these people don't, for various reasons, they don't have anybody, they don't have any funds, they're down, you know, and they just need love, but they show it, like, they show so much love, they'll go into the worship service and worship like they have everything in the world, because they have God, and that's not all of them, some of them are broken, and they need love, you know, they need to be shown love, and that's what I love about it, it doesn't matter where they come from, what their past is, what their present is, um, we care about, you know, helping them for their future. That's what I love about Penn. And you know, what's funny about it is that, uh, like, like you, said, you would think they had less reason. Like, right. they, you would feel like they would be offended by the idea of God or right. people and care. Then they're not. It's, it's so refreshing. Like, they, you <laughs> walk into the sanctuary and they are in there praising God, like, with their backpacks, you know, that right. they carry around because they're homeless. And, they're in there praising God, like, more than I see in, like, a regular church service. Like, they are loving on God and loving on each other, and they really help each other. It's a community, and and I love it. And they're homeless. For, people are like, well, they choose to be homeless. That is the most ridiculous thing. Listen, uh, I got to say something, because uh, I know you're a financial girl. You like, you like numbers yes. and stuff like that. Uh, is it true that so many people, like more than we know, are like one or two paychecks away from yes. poverty? Okay, let me tell you, let me tell you my story. I um, got married. Um, my ex-husband and I built a business. You know, five hundred thousand a year, doing really well. Kids in pub, or private school. You know, a nice house, cars, pretty much. You know, going on vacations, whatever. And then um, his business started slowing down, and then he decided he didn't want to be married anymore, and he left. And um, 
for our mortgage was so high, I was going through a lot of medical issues, you know, surgeries and stuff. I was um, really disabled. I couldn't even work. So I ended up losing my house. Um, my car broke down. If I didn't have family that loved me, I would have been homeless. Right. It's very easy. And I've never done a drug in my life. I'm not an alcoholic. I, you know, am a hard worker. I have college degrees. And I would have been homeless with my children if yeah. I didn't have anybody to help me. The, and, and that's what I don't think people understand is how fast your situation can change. Right. So I, I, I would... I would tell people, be very careful how you look at homeless people. First of all, especially, and I know this is going to, this is one of the, something that's very sensitive to you, just like the way you love vets, you know what I mean? Uh, some of these people are mentally ill who are vets, who fought for our country, and so just, I would warn you to be careful how you see homeless people. So Penn Ministries is a, is a phenomenal ministry. Um, and then even people that go to jail, not everybody that goes to jail, I mean, people make mistakes. Actually, uh, it's funny you bring that up. So uh, we're working on building our News Media One broadcast. News Media One is our news team where we actually go in depth on stories that the news covers, things that normally don't get talked about. We're gonna, it's going to be amazing. We're working on that. It's going to be coming in uh, this summer. Uh, so we're excited about that. Crystal's going to be one of our journalists, you know, which I'm excited about. She just found out right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you text uh, me all the time too. When yeah. you decided to do the radio show, you're like, yeah. oh, by the way, you're going on the radio yeah. with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and okay. the CSJ kids did a phenomenal job last week. Yeah, they did a phenomenal job. You did great, guys. Make sure you get a chance to go back and look at the footage from them. They 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 did a, a great job uh, doing their segment from seven to seven thirty every other week. I think is what uh, Crystal wants to do, and you know, pretty much everything goes Crystal's way because. If it doesn't, then there's hell to pay. You know, I'm just saying. That is not true. That is the truth. Literally burning in hell if you don't do things Crystal's way. So that is the safest way to do things. Um, good grief. My battery is already going to. That is not true. That is true, people. But the CSJ kids did a great job. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, hey, guys. Hey, everybody. DJ Dozier just tuned in. He's watching. DJ Dozier, oh, it has, DJ. he is the author of the amazing book, Decide to dominate. Uh, listen, guys. If you want, if you listen, if you want to go to the next level, this is a great asset to your book collection. Make sure you check out DJ Dozier. He's going to be on the show again. He was here last time. He rocked it. Uh, so we're going to have a good time uh, talking about that. I got something to tell you. People have been asking me, Duke. You know, Pastor Duke, why don't you start a church? I need everybody to hold on. I'm busy doing something real quick. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, because I multitask. All right, so here we go. All right, there we go. There we go. There we go. Sorry, I had to fix the YouTube channel. So people ask, why don't you start church? Listen to me. This is my church. I, I am pastoring the airwaves. I pastor the streets. This is my church. That's why I, I, I love what I do. I don't want to be in a situation where I am bogged down, tied down. Like, my ministry is completely different. I love ministering to ministers. I love helping people. Um, I love, of all the like, pastors, I love doing what I do. And, and the, what God has called me is into media. So I really need you guys to pray for me because I sometimes I get, you know, when God does call me to plant a church, I will plant a church. Uh, there are some things that I need to establish first that God has also appointed me to and called me. But I, I know when it's time to start a church, and I'll do that. But uh, I, everyone's asking me, when are you going to start a church? When are you going to start a church? It, like, it's coming, people. Like, but you got to let me do what God called me to do first, uh, and then we'll move into that phase because I know that that's in the works. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you got to understand. When, this is a mission field, uh, and there's a war going on that is outside of the church that a lot of times starting a, a church will just hold you back from uh, the influence. Like, I don't think you guys know that like over 60% of churches are closing down. Uh, if you look, there's close, churches closing left and right. Um, evangelists are Sorry. sharing the, the gospel being shared. <laughs> Crystal is struggling, boy. Sorry. <laughs> the, the gospel uh, is it, people aren't evangelizing. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But I, I want to discuss something that that is very important. I need people to have an understanding of what Coming Soon Jesus is and what Current FM is. Um, listen, I, I don't know. If, have you guys heard that um, Lifeway Christian Bookstore is closing? Mm -hmm. Well, what's funny about that 
is they the secular world does a great job interconnecting uh, all its entities Hollywood fashion food car you know you know the the music industry they're all interconnected and when you have that type of interconnection you are dominating in influence in Christianity we just have the church and if the church does not learn how to dominate and influence, like, technically, Christian kids spend more time with a non-Christian community, and parents expect their reality to be Christianity. And it's not. That's why Christianity is, I mean, we're, we're losing our youth. We're losing so much because we don't know how to interconnect uh, our influential dimensions, such as uh, television, radio, um, internet, Hollywood, you know, all that stuff. So we, we've got to do a better job at supporting each other. Now, I want to explain something that's very unique that a lot of people don't understand and don't know. All right. Israel was the marketplace, people. That's right. Israel was the marketplace. When you read the Bible, you're actually looking at the marketplace. Major trade route. Israel was like New York City, biblically. Because to get from Europe to Africa, you had to go through Israel. It was the only trade route. So it was a very important piece of territory. It was a very important piece of territory. So a perfect example, when the day of Pentecost happened, it happened in the marketplace where people saw that the like these men of God they knew about the Jewish culture already. They knew that Rome was oppressing the Jewish people and all that stuff. But men of God begin to speak the word of God in their languages and their influence. God wants to dominate and influence and in the marketplace. This is why we planted the kiosk in Greenbrier Mall in Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, because God is doing something profound and, he's, and, and, and that's going back to the origin. Going back to, to how he does things. Now that the church is established, now that the foundation of the church in America has been laid, we now have to evolve. We've got to build the kingdom of God up. And the, the building of the kingdom of God requires us to take territory. It is a shame that Christians are more loyal to their jobs than they are to the church. However, I understand why. Their jobs help pay their bills. So pastors have to learn how to evolve and make sure that we are taking care of our people. The church has taken a, a stance where it's almost like you give to the church and you'll get blessed. Well, the problem with that is that it's, it's more than that. The church has been built on volunteerism and it doesn't, we've got to do a better job at understanding that God wants us to dominate in creativity, dominate in influence, dominate. We're the head and not the tails. Deuteronomy 7, I'd like for, I'm going to read that real quick. And I want you to take a listen to this. Um, and, and Deuteronomy 7 tells us so much about how God sees us as the leaders. He says, and when the Lord thy God shall deliver thee before thee, uh, Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. So, like, seriously, God is already... And he's talking about these other tribes, these non-believing tribes. They don't believe in God, or they believe in a different God. But he says, For they will turn thy sons from following me, that they may serve other gods. God is serious about the people of God leading the way of influence. Influence, influence, influence. God cares about our influence. Now, the church is losing influence because it's not taking territory. We are not supporting our Christian businesses. And, and, now, and it also means that Christian businesses should hold a higher standard. Christian businesses should have the highest level of integrity. Christian businesses should be helping the community the most. Christian businesses should be less concerned about profit and more concerned about people, but also understanding that wealth comes from doing good business. You know what I mean? Um, dedication, commitment, these are all things that absolutely matter. And unfortunately, Christians often take the, 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 the stance that, oh, God's going to bless it because we have a Christian business. And that is unfortunate that 
so many people take that stance, so many Christians take that stance. Listen, if you're not going to do hard work, you're going to fail. If you're not going to focus, you're going to fail. If you're not going to do good principles, your Christian business is going to fail. Now, what happens when you uh, are doing what God called you to do and you're not getting the support? This is very interesting. This is a very interesting concept here. You can do everything that God called you to do. Christ was standing outside of Jerusalem, and he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that kills the prophets. This means that you can be a child of God, a prophet of God, an evangelist, a pastor. You can be in position. In Ezekiel chapter 2, God tells Ezekiel, you're going to the, he said, you're going to go to the hardest hearted people of all. You're going to my people. These are hard hearted, hard headed people. Which is true. I don't know if you've ever met a Christian before. It is not the easiest thing to do to deal with crystal, uh, crystal. I mean Christians. <laughs> <laughs> that was good stuff right there. No, but I'm going to take you somewhere, and it's very interesting. Uh, I, I am a, the easiest Christian to get along with. Isn't that right, Crystal? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's so wonderful. One, <laughs> Never any problem. Crystal's like he is a devil. All right, so listen to this. He says, And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into to me when he spake unto me. And he said upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation, that they have rebelled against me. They, had, they and their fathers have transgressed against me, and even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I did send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And that's Ezekiel chapter 2. So when God, you got to look at what's happening here. All right, you got to look at what's happening here. God is, he clearly understands that his people are a bunch of knuckleheads. Sorry, folks. When you go to church, you are probably not going to find that it's just so sophisticated and so put together and so wonderful. You're talking about God saying, hey, listen, the, my people are knuckleheads. They're, they're wild. They're off the chain. So he's bringing order to that. Okay? He's they being, still are. They, and they still are. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's, he's bringing order. He's bringing order to a rebellious people because we have been terribly impacted and terribly affected by sin itself. And when you've been affected by sin, when you've been affected by dysfunction, sin is dysfunction. If you want to know what sin is, I need you to know that sin is anything that is dysfunctional. That is what sin is. Sin is things that don't work. You wasting your one life, your energy have your being on things that don't work. That is sin. Okay, sin is things that don't work. Sin is dysfunction. Dysfunction means not working. All right, not functional. So things that are that should not be. Those are that sin. Things that waste your time. Things that hurt you. That are not good for you. Those that's sin. All right. So, um, when you look at God, is fully aware. Okay, God is fully aware that. His people are hard-headed. Now, when you look at what we're doing in the mall, we see a lot of hard-headed people, all right? We see a lot of crazy people, but we also see a lot of people that are hungry for truth, but tired of church. They're hungry for truth, but tired of church. How could this happen when the church is supposed to be a place, a pillar of truth? Right, and I, a lot of people that I've to believe in God they love Jesus but they say they're tired of church because people are fake in church yeah well, well I gotta take time to say uh, hello to Dottie uh, Dottie's watching thank you so much and James Snyder oh, I love this guy this guy has been uh, every time Crystal and I are having a hard time this guy shows up him and his wife Kelly show up out of nowhere uh, and they just there's such a pillar of love and, and faith and we thank you guys for your prayers uh, it's like every time I get discouraged they show up somehow but Dottie this morning calls me I made a post on Facebook talking about how discouraged I was uh, at the kiosk because of the lack of support and what happens is we're watching 
businesses that have nothing to do with God, we're watching them make hundreds of thousands of dollars in front of us, and it's just going to a business. It's not going to the community. It's not going to help people. It's just, and we will struggle to make twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. I think we went three weeks and made ninety-one dollars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Three. Three weeks, we made $91. Uh, and Dottie prayed this prayer to encourage me, along with Janet Garcia, along with, uh, you know, uh, my Aunt Paulette. I mean, I want to thank everybody who kind of saw that saw that I was being affected and down in the dumps uh, because of the lack of support. I want to thank Crystal because she was just like, you know, well, Crystal Moore was like trying to kick me in the face to make me get up. She's like, yeah, stop being a baby. God's going to do something. All right, now, I need you to understand why I was discouraged. Because I wasn't discouraged because I'd lost faith in God. But it's like, God, your people, your people don't understand. I need you guys to get this. I need you guys to understand this. And I want this video to show this. Uh, and I want this radio broadcast to show this. What we're doing at the mall is we need the help of believers. Believers, you're the ones that are supposed to buy the shirts so we can be there Monday through Sunday sharing the gospel to broken people, lost people. We're supposed, you guys, you know, buy the shirts, and it gives us the ability to do ministry uh, and help people in a significant way. And then we're supposed to plant, you know, coming soon Jesus uh, points of contact, whether it's kiosk or inline store, in other states. This was not supposed to just be something that stays in Virginia. It's supposed to be something that grows and expands. And what we we need the body of Christ to be able to say, hey, listen, I'll do it. I'll get involved. I'll I'll buy a shirt. I'll help yeah, out. I just don't think people realize. I think like some people say, oh, you, you sell T-shirts. Like, well, first of all, we have more than T-shirts. T-shirts, right? We usually have gifts and stuff. We're getting ready to order more, like mugs and journals and yes, a lot of things. But also, it is a ministry in the middle of the mall. Like people come in and get so excited when they see the name of Jesus in the middle of the marketplace. And exactly. And here's the dilemma that I'm in. This, and, and this this is where Crystal and I go back and forth. And I want to invite you into our personal conversation about what we should do because our lease ends in June. Our lease ends, and we're trying to figure out should we stay or should we go. I see the value of the ministry there. I see that we've established a ministry there. However, we cannot afford to continue to pay out of pocket to be there. And it's and I know that businesses are closing down left and right. I know that brick and mortar is being challenged by Amazon. These are real, real things that are taking place. And it's almost like, man, do you know if we had like if we had just 500 sales a month, 500 sales a month would give us the ability to not only stay there, but dominate. Stay Not just stay there, but dominate. In When I say dominate, I'm talking about helping the homeless, helping single mothers, um, coming up with new innovations and new concepts that really empower families. I want to be a company that actually blesses families. I'm tired of broken promises from people. The church has a lot of times become like politicians where they promise things. You join the church, you commit, you give your time, you give your volunteering, you, you do that stuff. And then, like, seriously, like, you have to pretend that blessings are falling that are not actually falling. And this is where atheists have a problem with Christianity. When a child grows up and watch their parents struggle because they put everything they have into the church and the pastors and the preachers keep taking and taking and taking, that child is saying, this is not God. They're saying, hey, this is not God. It's supposed to be evidence that God is, blessings are supposed to flow. Now, when you take the gospel and put it in the proper place, when men and women of God begin to support each other and there's genuine community and families are really having each other's backs, that's the that's a true Hebrew teaching right there. Community, not just church community, but the church actually blessing the community in people's reality. You spend 45 minutes at church. 45 minutes at church and expecting the, like, do you understand? God built this planet on a molecular level. Do you know how careful he was to make sure everything was absolutely perfect? He sends his son. He, I mean, everything was so delicate. Everything was so plain perfect. Do you really think 
that the value of the gospel can be explained. And you have this life-changing word in 45 minutes that you get on Sunday. And then you spend the 90% of your week with the world at worldly jobs, in secular music, secular media, this and that. And you actually think you're going to walk in the power of God? That sounds more like 2 Timothy chapter 3. That's why we have such a generation that thinks it's holy, thinks it's right, thinks it's doing the will of God, but it's really not. We're just entertaining each other. The civil rights movement today would have never happened if it was this generation. If Christ was to come back today, he would not even recognize 90% of the things that's going on in the church because it's all about him. None of it is about it. It's, it's, the message of Christ is all about him. Who's that? Uh, <laughs> secular John, Tucker Jones. Oh, God. Tucker Jones. Man. John, how you doing, man? Good John. John, John Burton's on the board with us. That's awesome. Um, so what we're talking about here, I want to talk to you about the condition. Now, I know some pastors are going to watch this and get mad about what I'm saying, and I need you to understand. They would never do that. I need, well, I don't, you know, this is, <laughs> I need everyone to understand how much I don't care about what people think. I need people to know the truth. The church in America is not in a good state overall. Overall, the church is being left behind in so many dynamics, especially influence. Uh, the church used to have such an amazing ability to influence people. And the reason why that has been lost is because we let so much division come in. But I think now, and then today... People used to be excited to go to church and really be in God's house. Now people are like, Ugh, it's Sunday, i got to go to church. Yeah. Not all churches. And then you have some churches that people are excited to go to, but it's not to see God or be with God. It's to be with everyone and, you know, sing cool um, new worship songs and, you know, use all this new technology and feel like they're in the best church in the area and have potlucks. And it is a good source of community. Right. But they're not going there to be with God. Now, I know somebody who just wants to be combative say, well, the church is this and the church is that and you shouldn't talk about the church. Listen, I need you to shut up. Let me tell you why I need you to shut up. Because the church is supposed to do the will of God, not just preach. The, God made it clear that there were these people who only served him with their lips. We do not need lip service. There are single mothers who are sleeping in their cars with their children. And there's a church on every corner. This does not make sense. If churches would learn to work together, if pastors... This is why uh, Crystal and I are bouncing the idea. We're trying to figure out how we're going to go about it. We mentioned it before. We want to do a Christian family reunion. And it's going to be difficult, but we're going to try to figure it out. I think Crystal's a genius, and she can do anything. So she's going to help us do that. But we're talking about doing a Christian family reunion uh, where the body of Christ can genuinely come together... And say, listen, I mean, if you're a Baptist, if you're, uh, you know, whatever, I don't know, Pentecostal, Baptist, like all, all of the denominations that we have, we've caused so much division that people are just fed up with it and they would rather be atheist. Because they're like, the church looks silly. They're like, I don't want to be a Christian. They don't get along. You go to one church and they say, don't play music in the church because that's ungodly. You got another church that says, don't wear pants. You got another church. And then they're all pointing to the Bible. You got one person that says, oh, we're free because of the new covenant. The Old Testament is not necessary anymore. You go to another church and it says the Old Testament is this. And people are like, what are we supposed to believe? You know, and, and some people say, you know, you should learn Hebrew because then you'll learn the original meaning. And then you got some that say, you should, you know, it doesn't matter. This on the same topic, but a little bit off. You know, you know, part of the New Deal after the stock market crash of 1929, um, that's when um, a lot of different programs were put into place to help the poor. Which honestly, we shouldn't have needed that. Of course, I know we needed it. The elderly needed to be taken care of. Um, the poor people, you know, were hungry. There was a lot of different reasons that when we still have these programs um, a, a, almost 100 years later. But if the churches even then were doing what they were supposed to be doing and using the Bible as a financial guide to um, be able to save money to help people in need, then I don't think we would have even needed those programs because the church 
is the ones that, that should be helping the poor and the widows. We would not need a welfare program if the church would. Right. Did you do you know the the churches in America bringing in about three hundred billion dollars? That's how much money the churches all collectively bring in. They bring in that much money. And then you know how many times like a single mom needs a bill paid. And yes, I know people take advantage of the system. They'll spend their money on something else and then let their bills. I get that, but sometimes a lot of times that's not what happens. And a single mom will go to a church and say, "Hey, my power is about to get off, get cut off." Now, some churches are wonderful. They're going to help you. They're going to help them. But now churches are like, well, you need to prove it, and how do we know you're not going to do it again? Well, which it is true. You do need to hold people responsible. But so many churches now turn people away. I know there was a story where um, we knew someone that yep. moved to Georgia, right? And um, she was new, single mom. Um, she, was, she went to the church, yeah. She went to the church that she started going to. She hadn't been there long. And, and they, they, they denied her they, help. Denied because her help with her. Like, she wasn't rent. there a member long enough. Yeah, she wasn't there a member long enough. So they don't, they only help people that have been members for a long time. Even though this was a single mom that moved from this area to Georgia to better her life with her kids, and she just needed help getting on her feet. She was behind on rent. She, you know, trying to get a job. Not a deadbeat at all. Hard work, working woman. And the church turned her away because she hadn't been a member long enough. There are, didn't care that yeah. she was a single mom with kids and trying hard and everything. They just turned her away. So nope, sorry, you're not a member. What does membership have to do with anything? Exactly, exactly. And and this is one of the issues. It says, uh, uh <laughs> this guy, this guy is crazy. He's Lee, Lee Israel's on board. Oh, Lee, Lee, Haley. Lee Haley. You, know, you, see, <laughs> you see the tone drop, Haley. All right, so uh, one of the things that happens is that we have got to do a better job. Now, I, I need you to understand something. The reason why people trust their jobs better, even though the job will cut them for the benefit of the job, is because it, the job pays their light bills. The job, So they're stuck in this reality where they're like, I have a family to take care of. I've got to take care of my family. They pay my bills. And then when the pastor's saying, well, you need to, you show your job this dedication, you need to do this, this, and this. No one, listen, no one is going to trust that pastor without a reason. Like, like I don't care, pastor, what you say. You're going to tell me to tithe. You're going to tell me to give. My family's going to come first. My family's going to come first. And let me tell you why. Because at the end of the day, you're going to do something stupid the same way I was going to do something yeah. stupid. The church. Yeah, no, I, see, I, I'm I'm a hundred percent. No, I believe in tithing. tithing. No, I believe yeah. in tithing, but I'm talking about you got to sow on good soil. Right. You got to make sure you're at a real church. Some of these knucklehead preachers out here are false preachers. Now Jesus talks about false prophets and false teachers. You are not going to get anything back if you give to a bad ministry. The Bible says, "Take heed." It is your responsibility to make sure that your church is real. So many people are giving to churches, and the pastors are nothing but crooks. And and then on the other side. If you are in a good church, it is your responsibility to take care of the church and to take care of what the church is trying to take care of. So it is your responsibility to give to the church. It is your responsibility to have your pastors back and be there for your brothers and sisters in the church. And yes, and not just say, oh, I'll be here if you need anything. Actually show up. Yeah, and, and be because because it's very rare. Listen, let me tell you something. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I am telling you in the book of Duke, he who finds a good church finds a good thing. It is very rare to find a good church. Do not, listen, do not take a good church for granted. However, stay away from these crooks out here that are saying things that just hype you up and things like that. If there is no correction, if you do not leave your church convicted, then there's something wrong. If you can't be corrected, then there's something wrong. If it's all about gimme, 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 there's something wrong. The church should be something where the community can feel the impact because that church is there. If nobody knows the church is there in the community, that is not a church from God. Okay, that is a church that just, it's, it's designed and, to just... And, like, how do you know if you're in an unhealthy church? One way is if the pastor can never be challenged or can never be wrong. It's, um, you know, it's the way the pastor wants it to go. That's it. Now, don't get me wrong. You should respect your pastor. Pastors do have... Wisdom. God gives them a lot of times more wisdom than we have. But when a pastor can't be corrected at all and um, doesn't pour vision into their people, that's how you know. I think that's one of the reasons. 
Right. It, it, it's so true. Uh, leadership. <laughs> it, it does, if you if your leader is leading with an iron fist, you know what I mean. That is not a leader of and God. And also outreach. Like your God tells us to go out, help the poor, help the community, help people. If your church is not doing any outreach, I mean, what are you there for other than just sitting there and you know worshiping together? You have to do outreach into your community. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying is that so many people, so many people right now are out there trying to figure out. If God is real or not, they're, they're trying to figure out if God is real. They're trying to figure out, does God love them? They're trying to figure out, does God... The church has a real responsibility to human life, to the species, to the world. There's so many reasons why the church should be involved in uh, in, in nature, involved in taking care of animals and cleaning the community. Yeah. What is it? Uh, when you are pollution. Planning. There's there's so many different things that the church can do. Uh, but you can also be part of a church that is unhealthy and you can make, can make a difference. In it. Right, make a difference. Like start if you think, okay, you might have a good pastor, but the church is just lagging and they're not really doing much. We'll take the initiative. Sign the church up for, you know, a day out in the community to do something. You know, have start a program after church like a get together or something um there's just so many things you can do i, I love the idea we talked about before of churches coming together different churches um and like one Sunday, and the, so the church is still struggling with racism for god's right. sakes like like it was easier for the berlin wall to fall in what 88 86 80, like 88 in 1988 the berlin wall falls it was easier to dismantle the ku klux klan it was easier for the civil rights movement to happen it was easier and the church is still dealing with racism there's still a black church and a white church and this and that that's ridiculous now at the same time guess what else is going on in the church the way this generation has just thrown away the elderly Gotten rid of the, all the old hymns just to, to have worship teams and, and friends. Oh, that that is, is so terrible. You should go for the youth, too. But you shouldn't leave out. Every soul is important to God. Right. And the elderly are already left out of so you gotta, much. You got to reboot your... You, do you need some, some juice? You oh, the, ready? Yep. Wow. Yeah, we, we, we were rocking and rolling. You want to plug it? You, you need the longer cord? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, one of the things you have to watch out for is if your church is a uh, trend chasing, that is very, very dangerous. Trend chasing is not what churches are called to do. Uh, we're going to take a break. Uh, if you're watching, if you want to see what's going on behind the scenes, make sure you're watching the YouTube video. Uh, it's on YouTube, which is Coming Soon Jesus. I believe that's the YouTube. Let me make sure that's the YouTube channel. Or we're trying. Facebook, Coming Soon so, Jesus. Yes. Shirts. Please. Please share the broadcast if you're watching. Please share the broadcast because we're trying to build up our social media. That's a big deal. So it's. Uh, Coming soon, Jesus. Let me make sure that, yeah, it's, it's just coming soon. You'll see the black car that says coming soon on it. So it's coming soon. Uh, we're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. Make sure you like us on Facebook as well. We're going to play a couple songs. We'll be right back. It's not touchscreen. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> uh you know, funny, also a funny story today when I was in the elevator coming yeah. down, the lady kept looking at it. her son said, what are you looking at? She said, that car that says coming soon. She said, I wonder what's coming soon. And I turned around and I said, he is. And she said, oh, okay. <laughs> I love that. Sorry, folks. So, yeah, you gotta, we got to make a chord change. We're trying to keep our, uh, let's see if I can. So this song is How Can I Be Silent, Katie Hurst. Katie Hurst. So it's Katie Hurst, How Can I Be Silent. All right, so listen, we're not bashing the church we're trying to stop stupidity that's what we're talking about here uh the church in america the church in america is uh you know it's got a lot of issues and the reason why it has a lot of issues is not because people don't love god it's just people don't know what to do and when people don't know what to do they just do a lot of dumb stuff you know what i mean um uh, and that's one of the issues so what we're trying to do is, even though there's a lot of church doing it the right way, if we get more believers who are on fire for God, speaking the same thing, sharing the gospel. Uh, oh my. <laughs> which one is that coming soon, Jesus t-shirts? 
There's no way you can put it over there, can you? No, I mean, yours is fine. Let's just leave it right there. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. So, the idea is to uh, have the body of Christ, like, really inspired. But we've got to address what's wrong. We've got to be willing to say what's wrong. We can't pretend that everything's fine when it's not. You know, um, and that's one of the, the main issues in, in American Christianity is that people think that everything's just okay. Oh, and God's going to do this and God's going to do that. No, God is not. God is going to correct us. So we need correction first. And of course we need to do that in love. Um, and I mean, like, I understand why atheists are atheists. I actually do. Because there's so much nonsense going on in the body of Christ. You know, there's so much nonsense going on in the body of Christ, and we've got to do a better job at, at showing what we believe. We've got to do a better job at saying, hey, you know, um, you got the bang, that bang. You know, it's an energy drink. Uh, we've got to do a better job. Just getting that out of your way, folks, over here. Um, we got to do a better job at sharing the gospel and getting people to understand what we actually believe. There's nothing worse than people thinking they're doing a good job when they're really not. There's nothing worse than when people think that they're making sense when they don't. I mean, it's like, it's actually embarrassing. And so many American Christians think that the gospel is about America, that it's about this. No, it's about the world. It's about humanity and God saving humanity. Uh, we're about to go back in on air. So again, if you're watching on radio, uh, make sure, I mean, if you're watching on radio, if you're watching on YouTube, um, you know, this is, this is just how we roll. WJLZ. Different strokes. Different strokes. Different strokes. All right. So that was just different strokes. I don't know if you guys remember. I'm old, so I know different strokes. You may not know different strokes. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. But Different Strokes was a great show, you know, uh, back in the day. Just check it out. If you get a chance, check it out. Check out Different Strokes. All right. So now what I'm talking about right now is something very, very important. Uh, the state of the church in America is not okay. It's not in a healthy place. And what we've got to do to correct it, I am not about to sit here and just talk about all the problems. Okay, I'm not about to do that. What I'm doing is just addressing what needs to be addressed. We have got to do a better job at building the kingdom of God. We've got to do a better job at building the kingdom of God uh, because naturally what happens is We'll, we'll, we think God is going to be okay and constantly turn a blind eye to things that he's not going to turn a blind eye to. God's going to deal with this stuff. He's going to deal with us. He's going to deal with you. He's going to deal with sin. Uh, look at Revelations. Look how God criticizes and critiques and corrects the church and those who call themselves Christians. Uh, believers, you can be fooled and think that you are a believer and you're really, really not. You know what I mean? Uh, like, listen... Guys, the people need to hear the gospel. They need to hear the truth of the gospel. Um, so it, so we're in the mall, and there's this group of people called uh, the World's Mission Society Church. Uh, and these people believe that Jesus already came and gone in, in uh, 1948. Uh, he already came and gone, and his wife, uh, he had an affair, and his wife, is, uh, his mistress is now the head of the church. Well, the guy comes and sits and talks to me today, and he's trying to convince me why... Uh, this is true. And I'm like, dude, you're doing exactly what Matthew 24 said. It said that many will come and say, I am Christ. I am here. He says, don't go. Don't follow them. I said, you guys are doing that because Christ did a lot of teaching about false prophets and false teachers, right? So what ends up happening, I got you. Okay. So what ends up happening, you know, uh, is, can you lean back a little bit? Let's see, just, let's show them. It's like right on my belly. I got a big belly. I'm 305 pounds. There we go. So I just didn't want to <laughs> shot of my gut. Last week, Chris was like, dude, your underwear is showing. It's showing your butt on the video. You're showing your butt on the video. And I was laughing so hard. Now, uh, because I was like, oh, my God, let me move to that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. <laughs> you, know, you now know what my undies look like. I do apologize. I'm losing weight, so my clothes are hanging off of me a little bit. Uh, but anyway, um, 
So the guy's trying to convince me. And we were there for about 30 minutes. When I look down the distance and I see Crystal coming and I said, listen, man, I need you to, I, I, I understand this conversation. I respect you. I understand this conversation. But my wife is coming and I need you to leave. <laughs> I was like, she is not going to be. I was wondering because I walked up. I'm like, what did I do? Yeah. Just like, uh, uh, you want to go ahead and go? And I'm I was like, like, what? I was like, dude, you need to leave. I didn't know who he was. And then as soon as I said, he is one of the Mother God people, Chris, Chris goes, I know you're smarter than that. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? Oh my God. No, I I but, yeah, I mean, she was just like, she was straightforward. It was hilarity. Oh man! Mm. Oh, well, you can't tell me they believe that their that Christ yeah. came back yeah. had a natural mother and father, <laughs> um, was able to sin, have mistresses, commit adultery, yeah, he was. lie, do whatever, and then he died. And yeah, he's been buried in the ground for a long time. Oh man, I was all kinds of weak up there. That I mean, it was. And I told him, I'm like, I don't know about you, but that's not my God. That was. She was just eating this guy alive. It was hilarious. Um, my my concern is that there's so many people that are willing to just believe anything. You know, uh, there are people out there dying because they won't get a blood transfusion because Jehovah's Witnesses believe you can't get a drug blood transfusion. Like, dude. What is that? I would have literally died without one. So <laughs> right. I'm grateful for that. Right. And I'm like, you're talking about dying. You know, and like. I'm an organ, be an organ donor, people. It's um, very important. It's, it's it unbelievable. It's unbelievable that people will actually, like, got it. Listen, you got to have wisdom. Like, wake up. You know, I, like I said, I completely understand why people don't believe in God. Because the way Christians look in this generation I mean, they're not focusing on God. They're not focusing on nature. They're focusing on, they're focusing on what people look like who claim to believe in God. So it's almost like, if this is what people of God, if if this is what God approves, I don't want any part of that. You know, like when they, when they can read the Bible and it clearly says, "Let there be no division amongst you." And then people are constantly divided. Now, I know Christians, if you listen to me, I know you are asking these questions. Why does this happen in the church? Why is that happening? Why is this? What? Do you, do you, look, think about the amount of fallen pastors who are having affairs. Pastors who are cheating on their own wives. Pastors who are doing... Why is this happening? It's happening because... because or you know what gets me? The, the, uh, well, that's like lying in the church too. Pastors, like... When they have to make up stories that aren't yes. true when they're preaching, and like you can tell, it, you know, I do have the gift of discernment, so I can always tell when someone's making something up, and it happens all the time where pastors have to make up stories. Now it's something if you would, you know, say that it's a made-up story, but when you put something off as truth that you're telling somebody, that's a lie. Right, and that's because people are because there's a there's a there's a culture that is already deceived and and that deception has now crept into the church where people are now accepting deception better than truth now you're going to say duke how could you say this you're saying terrible things Why you... <laughs> that was an actual word now listen to this he goes i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom Preach the word, be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Now this means that goofy people are going to want to keep the name of God. That means that that goofballs are going to want to keep the name of God, but they're going to want to do what they want to do, and they're going to want to do it their way. This is how the God, the gospel gets confused. This is how it gets tainted. This is listen, guys. You got to understand. If our military operated the way our churches do, we would not be the greatest country in the world. We would not have the greatest military in the world. All right. Let me tell you something about these nine weeks of boot camp. These nine weeks of boot camp in the military, right? 
They're getting that civilian lifestyle out of you so you can focus and become a soldier. The church has to start operating the exact same way. Listen to that real quick. I just want to say congratulations. I have two little cousins, Lexi, um, who graduated last year from right. um, boot camp, well, the Naval um, boot camp in Chicago. And then um, my little cousin Brian did on uh, yesterday. And, oh, wow. Um, so I'm proud of both of them. They're doing really well. Well, that's, that's really cool. No, that's good. Thank, and thank you for your service as well. Um, the, 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 idea that, um, the idea that people think that it's okay to just you know, go to church on Sundays and things like that. Listen, guys, that is not okay. You are the church. You are the body of Christ. We need you out there sharing the gospel, evangelizing, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Too many people think that it's okay to just... You know, do whatever they want, and it's not okay. What we, we've got to have it. Listen, the church, if you're a Christian and you do not care if somebody knows Christ or not, then you're not a Christian. You should care about the souls of others. We'll be right back. Now, this is what's called a legal ID. Where we're playing that. 9 FM, W250 AE, 103.7 FM, W279 AD, and 103.9 We're going to come right back in after we play the legal ID. So. All right, we're back. Yeah, that was just taking a little break. Uh, we had to play the legal ID, you know what I'm saying? Make, make sure... You know, business is being taken care of properly. But, yeah, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that if we want to see the church grow, first of all, this black church, white church crap, it's got to go. The ch this racial issues in the church is ridiculous. You know, it, it, when I see the black church and the white church, I'm like, yo. When I go in a place and it's all white, I don't feel comfortable, or, like, all black, and it's just because I like things. We are a melting pot here in the U.S. I like things mixed all up. Right. In a big old bowl. <laughs> right, right, right. Like I like Skittles and M and M's together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You> I know, <laughs> So it's so weird. <laughs> but but I, I'm just trying to get everybody to understand that as long as if you if you're a pastor if you're a black pastor and you look at your congregation and you see only black people, I need you to understand that you. It's not that you're called to the black culture because that is not the case. You are called to the call of God. The will of God is what you're called to, and that is unity. Um, that, that is unity. You're called a unity in the body of Christ. And that means you need to go out and network. That means you need to train your people on how to reach people of other cultures. That means, because do you understand what we can, we, what we're capable of if we actually took time to take care of each other? There's a church on Laskin Road, uh, off Laskin Road on uh, Regency Drive called Freedom Fellowship. There's black people, Chinese people, Filipino people. Th these people are doing church the right way. I'm telling you, they're doing church the right way. Uh, Freedom Fellowship on and much and then you have a church. Your mom's church is, is very um, yeah, multicultural. It's, it's uh, well, it's small, it's new. Um, <laughs> it's funny. It, it, it the church. Some people in it started out with Faith Alive, then it went to Genesis, and um, when that pastor um, decided to do something else, uh, Pastor Bob Bob Groves, then this church spun off of that church and. Um, it's a really great church. It's um, in Greenbrier. It's called Limitless. And I'm trying to get which hotel it's in. They do it in one of the ballrooms um, at the hotel in Greenbrier. But it is such a loving church. It's all about love. And my mom is a greeter there, and she hugs everybody. Like <laughs> So I'm just warning you, if you go there, you're going to get a hug, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so, I heard that. That's pretty. My cool. mom hugs everybody. Like she's just that way. But, right, so, um, if we want, we, listen. If the church can't be corrected, then I'm telling you right now, America's already lost. A lot of the stuff that's going on in America right now, it is because of the church misbehaving. Okay, real quick, just so in case anybody wants to go, it's a, if you want to be a part of a small church that's growing all the time, that they focus on love um, and healing and faith. Um, it's called Limitless. It's in the Spring Hill Suites on Crossways Boulevard, 1446 Crossways Boulevard in Chesapeake. And I've visited there, and everybody makes you feel welcome. 
it's if, so if you want to get plugged into a church that is growing but it's still small right now so you can grow with it it's the perfect church and okay. and then uh there's another church again i told you about freedom fellowship and there's christian embassy christian People embassy love. oh my gosh <laughs> pastor tim and rodica lambert the, that's what I'm saying. That there's so many churches doing it right. Like we thank you for your service. We thank you for the sacrifice you make. We thank you for all the things that you're doing. It, it, it's amazing that to see churches that really help people and really help the community. You know, don't stop. We're praying for you. We believe in you. And this is why we need you to support coming soon, Jesus. We will come to your church and set up a, a table at your church. Your church will get ten dollars a shirt. So when we set up, we're we're actually, you don't have to pay for anything. We set up just to donate to your church. Invite us to your church. Uh, you want to send your, your uh, invitations to Crystal, with a C, crystalhw at comingsoonjesus.org. That's crystalhw at comingsoonjesus.org. And make sure that you, uh, like, help us support your church. We are here to support your church. But we're not going to put up with a bunch of knuckleheaded stuff. Now, I was talking about the black church and the white church and this and that. I was saying... I dare church, I dare a pastor to say, you know what, on this Sunday, we're going to go visit another church. We're going to go, we're going to hang out with our brothers and sisters and visit another church. Look, I need you to understand that unity is power. Pastors, the same way you tell people to tithe and trust God and they'll be giving back this and that, is the same way you need to trust God. And if, you're, if you have an all-black congregation, you need to go to a white church and say, hey, how do we get more white people in our church? How do we get more Filipinos in our church? How do we get more Spanish people in our church? If the, the church can't be the pillar of truth and the pillar of racism at the same right. time. It can't be, you can't do that. You know what I mean? And the church can't be the place where people are getting constantly disappointed. Because that's what's happening, America. That's what's happening in America. Is so many churches are just okay with disappointing people. Now, I this is a message of rebuke because I have permission by the word of God to bring rebuke and correction. I'm going to read it again in case some of you knuckleheads want to have something to say. Listen to what it says. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom of God. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine is very important. What you learn, Jesus taught us, Yeshua told us, do not give in to deception. You are responsible for deception. If you're deceived, you are responsible. How do I know this? Let's go back to Genesis. All right, look at this. Genesis chapter 3, okay? When you look at Adam and Eve, when you look at Adam and Eve, uh, it says in, in verse 4 when the conversation with that the serpent starts talking it's kind of weird I get it but it's also weird that we're in a rock floating around in the middle of the universe and we're the only planet with life on it that's also weird so when you talk to me about how ridiculous it is that there's a talking snake I think it's ridiculous that you talk I think it's ridiculous that, that life even exists we're on a planet I mean this life is mysterious there's a lot of things that happen that are weird I think, I think platypuses are weird not just to, <laughs> you know what I mean I think uh, there's a lot of weird stuff. I think caterpillars are weird. They turn into butterflies. I think, uh -huh. uh, you know what I mean? I'm just saying there's a lot of weird stuff. There's Life is weird, you know? But listen to this. This talking serpent, okay? This talking serpent says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doeth know that the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to eat to her eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the, and the Lord God called unto them and said unto him, Where art thou? And, I, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Un, And who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree, wherefore I commanded thee that thou shouldest, shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman thou gavest me, <laughs> the woman thou gavest me to be with, uh, she gave me the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, 
It, what, what is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Beguiled means deceived, tricked, bamboozled, scammed. Oh, man, I hate being tricked. You know, it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above the earth, best of the field, uh, beast of the field, upon the belly that thou shalt thou eat the dust of all the days of their life. I will put enmity between the, thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy, bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply their sorrows and conception and sorrow that shall bring forth the children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of the It's interesting to me that when you go and look in Genesis chapter 4, God is just issuing out responsibilities and consequences. Responsibilities and consequences. You do something stupid, you take responsibility, you deal with the consequence. When you do something stupid, you take responsibility and you deal with the consequence. That's what men do. That's what women do. Especially men of God. Especially women of God. Adam and Eve only knew God. They did something stupid. They had to take responsibility and they had to deal with the consequences. If you are a true man or a true woman of God, you take Take responsibility for what you've done, and you take the consequences. You deal with the consequences. Now, God did not stop blessing them because they did something stupid. Christians in America often are trying to escape consequences for their stupidity. I think it's very interesting that God made them deal with their consequences because of course they were deceived when they listened to another voice. Listen to that. When you're deceived, it's because you're getting your ideas about life from sources that did not create life. If you're getting ideas about life from your feelings, your feelings are not God. Whatever you obey is who you serve. So if you obey every feeling that pops up in your head, your feelings are your God. If your feeling, because you obey God, that is different. That means your mind, body, and spirit is aligned to the will and word of God, and your feelings are tuned to that, so they're responding in that way. But you train your feelings, and if you don't train your feelings, your feelings will train you. Does that make sense? So, I kind of realized, too, that a lot of people that... And I've been guilty of this too, but are in their feelings a lot. Of, a lot of times, it's because of pride. They're too prideful, and it causes like they can't be wrong, or um, they just have issues when anyone tries to bring up anything to them. You know, it's their fault or whatever, and then that's what causes the feelings. But I think pride causes a lot of that. Pride is a killer. I feel like pride is what happened to Adam when the first thing that comes out of his mouth is this woman you gave me. The first thing Adam did was deny responsibility. You know what I'm saying? The, the first thing Adam did was deny responsibility. He pushed himself away from the responsibility. He didn't want to deal with the responsibility. And, 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 and then we inherited that. As the body of Christ, we inherited that. It, uh, there's a psychological disorder from it. it, it it's called uh, disassociation disorder. Disassociation disorder is a better disassociation disorder where no matter what goes on, you, what goes wrong, you could be on video doing something stupid, and you will disconnect from it as if you had nothing to do with it. it, it and, and, and there's people who live in such denial because they just can't see their own their, their own flaws. They can't see themselves, and this is what happens. Um, I think Adam was so overwhelmed by fear that he just, you know, this woman you gave me, like, you guys need to work this out. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's like Adam was like, you, 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 you deal with this. I, 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 I didn't do anything. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and sunbathe and you guys tell me what you guys come up with. You know, that's what I think was happening to Adam. Adam, the, listen, God was holding them accountable when you choose to listen to another voice, you are opening yourself up to deception. Do you understand what I'm saying, folks? You're opening yourself up to deception. The Word of God will never betray you. 
It will not always be comfortable, but it'll never betray you. Do you get what I'm saying, guys? Do you understand? I'm looking at all the different cameras. We got cameras all over. Do you understand? Boom, 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 boom. Do you understand? The word of God will not always make you comfortable, but it will always correct you. It will always bless you. It will always make you strong. And the deeper you go, the deeper you go in the word of God, the stronger you're going to get. The more you learn about the word of God, the stronger you're going to go. Uh, the stronger you, that's why, you know, a, a lot of Christians are coming up with ideas. We don't need ideas. We need inspiration from the Ruach. The Ruach means Holy Spirit. That's the inspiration, the Ruach, the Spirit of God. God, The Bible tells us that God, that God breathed into Adam. That means God inspired Adam to live, not to have life. The, the, the catch this, God did not, when God breathed, he breathed himself into Adam. So this means Adam now had all the components to live, not just to have life, but to actually live. It means he, he had understanding, he had wisdom, he had a connection with God, he had a knowledge with God. God implanted that in him. And when he decided to listen to another voice, there was absolutely no justifiable reason why that was. So God now had was God was able to hold him accountable because of the knowledge that that Adam already had. He had instruction. He had belief. He had a, a knowledge of who God was. So there was no justifiable reason for Adam to fall into sin. This was a choice. Now, when Christ came and redeemed us and gave us the word of God, and he told us to study the word of God, he gave us prophets, he gave us bishops, he gave us apostles, he gave us evangelists, he gave us preachers and teachers. When God in his, think about this, God in his infinite wisdom, who made the sun, the stars, the water molecules, who made all of this stuff, thought to himself, what, can, what else can I bless the people with to ensure their salvation? And he says, I know, I'm going to give them preachers, teachers, prophets, apostles, evangelists. I'm going to give them these things. That means if you are a teacher, if you are a leader, if you are a son and daughter of God on any level, you have a responsibility as sure as the sun is shining. As sure as water hydrates, as sure as oxygen is for the lungs, you as a son and daughter of God have a responsibility to share the gospel. Wow, you just preached. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> you have a responsibility to share the gospel. Because, because what happens is when you misplace the divine order of God and don't see that, that from the beginning of creation, the man and woman of God were a part of creation from the beginning, which means the man and woman of God are going to be part of creation from the middle. The man and woman of God are going to be part of creation from the end. We are a part, we are the body of Christ. We are the will of God. We are the will of God. God has empowered us to live. That means when he said, let there be light, there was light. He inspired the light, the Ruach. There, he said, let there be this and there was that. There, let there be this and there was that. Then when he, But when he got with man, he was intimate with man. He formed man in his image and inspired him to live. Live. And what's happening to our churches today, what's happening to the body of Christ today, is that the body of Christ is doing tradition. The body of Christ is doing mechanics. The body of Christ is doing the form of godliness, but it's not living the power. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, it said there will become a generation, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. It said they will have a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. A form of godliness, the same way God formed Adam. But Genesis tells us that God, it's, the Bible says that man did not yet live. Just because you have a form does not mean you are inspired by God. You can have a body, you can move, you can, you can be a human, but it does not you you does not mean you are inspired by God to live. You can you can function, 
but it does not mean you are inspired by God to live. This is the reason why Christ would say, you whitewashed tombs. You, you, the walking dead is real, folks. And there, some of them are your bosses at work. Some of them are your husbands. Some of them are your wives. Some of them are your children. There are zombies all around us. There are zombies. The zombie apocalypse is already here. And the only way to bring them life is to tell them about Christ. It's the only way to show the love of God, to be the word of God. The walking word is who you are as a son or daughter of God. You are a beneficiary of the salvation of Christ. You are a descendant of the word of God. John chapter 1 tells us that the word was made flesh. The word was God and the word was with God. You are a descendant of that word. And until the church remembers who he, who it is, the church is the bride of Christ. Israel, the church in Israel must connect. We have a history already. The church is so caught up in trying to be American. You know what I mean? It's like, guess what, church? I got bad news. We are, we are not... Let, let, let me tell you something. I'm going to explain something to you. All right. If you are a Christian and you live in Russia, if you're a Christian and you live in Russia, if you are a Christian and you live in Haiti, if you are a Christian and you live in America, if you are a Christian and you live in Egypt, what are you supposed to be listening to? Your culture or your God? This, this, is, how, this is why atheists exist. Because they're like, yo, how come the Christians in this country do this and the Christians in this country do this? How come the Christians in Africa have more than one wife? How come the Christians in America say that that's wrong? How come they? Because we've mixed so much, we don't even know what the truth of the Word of God is anymore. But nobody wants to say it. They just want to keep pretending that their little Christian version of God is real and all that stuff, you know. And, and you know, we're taking too many liberties with an ancient holiness. Too many liberties. And it's causing too much chaos. You know? I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, Bishop C.L. Williams has just joined us. Bishop C.L. Williams, everyone. Bishop C.L. Williams. Oh, Jennifer Greasy is here. Jennifer Greasy is uh, watching. So I got to be on my best behavior. Make sure I do everything right. <laughs> I, if I get in trouble, she's she's one of she's she's a, she's one of the ones that can be like, hey, you didn't do this. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, she's, <laughs> She has a great show uh, in the morning. Make sure you check that out with Jennifer Creasy in the morning. Uh, love you, Jen. Thank you for everything that you do. All right, so now what we're talking about right now is very important. We have to, if we're going to do ministry, and this is what Coming Soon Jesus is about. This is why I'm not so quick to just plant a church. we got enough churches planted. We need to hear the word of God. We need, we need to do the word of God. I need you to understand something about the Hebrew people. The well, he I think, too, like, we need to remember we are one body. Overall, we are one church. And I think that's what we forget because people, it used to be where people just wanted you in church. Now people are um, fighting to have you in their yeah. church. And sometimes that's when it gets a little difficult. It's because they're not fighting to have you at their church because they care about your soul. It's like they need your tithing. <laughs> and, um, that's true. And that's, that's a we're good sad. word. Like, we need the churches to care about souls. That's a solid word. I, and, and, you're, and you're right though. You're right. You know, and, and I think that what happens is this, um, be, you, you do not want to go to a church that is trend chasers, culture chasing. Again, Look at how we've treated the elderly, how we've just, the, there are so many people who, uh, who can't even get to church because they're, they're elderly and they don't have a ride, right? And so what happens is, and this is so sad, they just give up. They're like, and then they go and it's too loud and they don't know and this and that. It's like, so what do you do with that? How do you cater to that? Well, it's real simple. It's real simple. That means that we need to do something as a church. We need to do something that, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due. I don't like politicians too much, but when I look at the fact that they do, th you know, when, when change is needed, whether it's good change or not, that's one thing, but they're willing to change, willing to, to, to make some kind of a difference, whether it's good or bad, they're, they're willing to do something. They don't just, you know, 
get rid of a, imagine if our government was to be like get rid of all the old people they're in the way you know, what if, what if the government thought like our churches do? Oh, well, we need to be more relevant. Let's just, let's just get rid of the old people. Let's just get rid of the elderly. Because th that's actually what's happening in our churches. It is. And the, but the Bible says that our I elders... Heard somebody, the, I was having a conversation with somebody recently, and that's what they said. They were, I don't remember, they were talking about something, and they were like, um, yeah, you know, we're trying to gear more toward getting younger people in than older people. And I'm like, what in the world? That's the most horrible thing. Like, <laughs> you know, we're not talking about music or fashion. We're talking about <laughs> souls, people, yes. God's people. Like, it doesn't matter if they're a hundred or one. Like, God still loves them the same. Like, how can and, you pick and choose what age group you want? <laughs> and, and it's unbelievable how people are so okay with, like, and, and, and what scares me the most is knowing that the elderly are uh, th the Bible has a purpose for the elderly and then sometimes like there's a lot of elderly that want to go to church but they don't drive anymore they're on their own you know they're alone and stuff you, it's horrible we should all be you know reaching out in the community and saying hey do you need a ride do you need a ride it used to be um, you know church vans yeah. were more prominent than they are now like a lot of churches don't even have vans they don't care to pick up the people that don't drive and that need help well, I do know this. I do know, again, so for, in case some of you are just tuning on, we're not church bashing. Uh, but we're, what we're talking about is where the church does need mm -hmm. correction. And overall, overall, the church does need correction. Overall, the church is not in a good place. Now, not everything is pastor's fault. I'm at the mall, and I see a lot of church girls at the mall, and I'm there Monday through Sunday, and I am watching people who go to church spend thousands of dollars in the mall and it's very interesting because they don't have a problem coming up with a reason why they need these $225 pair of shoes but I can see where a pastor will get frustrated because it's like hey man you guys will go and spend money you will make sure your cell phone stays on but you will not make sure that the word of God is going forth what's up with that so a lot. So you see the, the 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 candle is burning on both ends of the stick. It's it's a lot of false preachers and a lot of false prophets out there. But it's also I would remind you that the Bible tells us to beware of wolves in sheep's clothing, not necessarily wolves in shepherd's clothing. Right. Think about that, wolves in sheep's clothing. A lot of times it's the people in the pews that are causing the division. Gossip. Yes. I hate that. I absolutely do. When people come up to me and gossip about other Christians, I, I don't like it. <laughs> and I'm like, if you're going to gossip to me about another Christian, you'll then gossip, you're gossip you. about me too. So I don't trust you to tell you anything. Right. That, that's a very true point. That's a very good point. But yeah. If you're going to come to me and talk about other Christians behind their back, then, uh, you know, it's different if you say, hey, let's pray for them. They're going through this, you know, a genuine thing. But if you're just like, oh, you know what she did, you know what they did, and this is what they got going on in their house. And I'm like, Okay, well, I know not to tell you anything because you're going to go tell everybody. <laughs> like, I don't want to know. Don't tell me. God didn't mean for me to know that. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, you're not I wrong. Can't stand gossip, especially among Christians. It's horrible. Well, you know what I think is funny when people talk about people when they're doing the same thing that the right. people they're talking about are doing. Yep. It's a, it's a, it's amazing how many Christians will dog someone out for doing the exact same thing they're doing. Now the Bible addresses that there was a man that owed the king some money, mm -hmm. and the the king forgives the man, okay. and then the man goes out and beats somebody up for owing him money. Mm -hmm. And when the king finds out about it, he says, "You vile, cruel man!" And he was like, yeah, "I showed you this mercy, and you can show it to someone else." And he punishes him and makes him deal a debt that he couldn't pay. But I think he had like life in prison and had to double this debt. Now, when that type of stuff happens, that is telling you that God cares so much about character, folks. Mm -hmm. Do not be fooled. God cares about character. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. Lying is dangerous to your soul. <laughs> I don't, I, I've never liked liars. I 
how, you can't trust somebody that lies. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. I... Is that you? That's <laughs> you. You know, liars are dangerous, dangerous people. You know what I mean? Uh, and I think that what happens is when people lie, when they're okay with lying, uh, look, I've been through a lot. And I, I get on people's nerves because I'm very transparent. Crystal hates that I tell all my business to oh, everybody. I hate it. And I'm very um, private. private. And I don't know what God is doing, why you brought us together, because you're such a private person, I and, and, and I'm a very well, transparent person. I think it is, too, like... Um, I know how people are, and when you put your business out there, especially in a public platform, sometimes people actually um, pray against you, and they have negative thoughts against you, and sometimes it's better to not put all your personal business out there. But see, I, I have to put my personal business out there mainly because I want to see people saved, and I never know which part of my life. God's been so good to me, and I've done so many stupid things that I assume that other people have done so many different stupid things, and I've done enough stupid things for so many people. So. Right. I think I just hold on to faith. It's like when I'm going through this <laughs> stuff, I, so a lot of times I make it, you know, I'll ask for prayer or whatever, but I really depend on God and make it between me and God. And, and I get it. I, 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 For me, I know that God has 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 done so many things to me and he the way he designed me like ministry is who I am I don't expect everybody to do what I do ministry is who I am it's not what I do so for me I can't live without sharing the gospel I can't function properly I it, I, I fall into a depression if I'm not telling someone about Christ I, I I mean my life is the word of God so I don't I I, I don't understand life outside of the Word of God. That he, is so true. Like, he has called me at 3 o'clock in the morning to um, <laughs> have Bible study yeah. several times. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I know, it's true. Uh, you know, it's like when he gets it on his mind and he wants to talk about God, he, we're going to talk about God. 3 o'clock yeah. in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, midnight, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I got to do it. And so what what happens <laughs> is this. What, what happens to me is that I... I I don't expect people to be able to, to, to see things the way I see things because they're, they're designed God and they're by God in their own unique way. I am designed for ministry. I am designed for this. So I, I, I embrace my identity. I embrace who God has called me to be. Now, with that being said, everyone has their own uniqueness. Mine is sharing the gospel and preaching. And, uh, and outside of that, listen, I am absolutely insane. If, if I, I, mean, I, I I belong to God. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm on a short lease. You can do something crazy and God doesn't make a big deal out of it. If I do something crazy, it's on TV, it's on CNN, everybody's talking about it. You know, so I, that's why I, I don't want, I'm not afraid of being transparent. Uh, because I'm like, hey man, it's going to be out there anyway. You know, and for me, um, one of the things is I know without a shadow of a doubt that if I tell a lie, it's going to hurt so many people to find out that Pastor Duke lies. I don't ever want that. I will put myself in a bad position to keep my word to someone. I will let someone know, hey, I thought that this was going to work out this way and it didn't. But I will hold myself accountable because I am not going to be another Christian that disappoints people. Christians, do you understand how many people don't believe in God because we're okay with disappointing people. Where is the integrity of the believer? Why is it so easy for believers to drop their word and still call themselves children of God, Christians? And the word of God makes it clear that we have to be honest with ourselves, that we have to be honest with each other. Uh, no, DJ Noble is in a building. He says, and, uh, he says, and, littering, uh, yeah, and littering in the driveway is the gospel. Now... So that, that's funny. He's talking about when I used to pass out uh, the Coming Soon Jesus flyers and I would put them on the ground and things like that. And, and he would call that, he said, that was littering. Uh, <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> no, but um, I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, sometimes God looks at it. I, I'm, I, I do not apologize for that. You know that, right? I hope you understand. Where are you at, DJ? Where are you at, DJ? You know I don't apologize for that. That's, 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 that's good preaching right there. <laughs> but I'm going to say this. Um, I, I, when God calls us to do something, and when we obey, what will let you know if it's God or not is the results. The results will, you will, somebody will benefit from it. Somebody will benefit 
from the sacrifices that you make. Somebody will benefit from what you're doing. It, when, when people are encouraged, there is no way on God's green earth that God is okay with people just being broken and hurt when there is a church on every corner. Mm -hmm. there, there, are, there are single mothers out there that need our help. There are widows out there that need encouragement. There are children out there that need fathers. And the God's solution to the human problem is the people of God. Do you understand that? Do you understand that the people of God are the solution? That's why Christianity was never a religion. Christianity is God's divine solution to sin. It's the blood of Christ. God is saying, not only did I save you, but I'm going to teach you the ways to live. I'm going to give you what it takes. I'm going to give you the instructions of what it takes to live. So many Christians are oppressed, depressed, oppressed, you know, uh, almost possessed. You know, so many Christians are downtrodden. So many Christians are broken. Why? Because they have salvation, but they're not listening to the instructions of what's required to live. Right. You got to, like, God wants us to, he said, I come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. <laughs> the lady in the booth. All right, DJ Nova started. We started. There's this lady at the booth one time. I gave her a track. Uh, we were driving to Philadelphia, and I, I gave her a coming suit Jesus card. I was like, God bless you, and gave her the card. And when we pull off, she screams, No! <laughs> like she, what? And I was just like, yeah, I, Before I gave it to her, I was like, Yo, this lady's a witch. You know what I mean? And then I gave her the card and said, God bless you. She said, No! <laughs> And DJ Noble laughed for about two to three hours straight. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Way you were funny, dude. We were we were in one of the tolls, and oh, that's good stuff. You know, uh, but I'm my point in in this is saying, hey, if we want to gain our influence back in 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 the uh, gospel, if we want to gain our influence back in America, look, like America is running for the hills. America is trying to get as far away from Christianity as possible and with just cause. Because so much of the corruption of today is not coming from the families. It's coming from the church not going into the communities. Right. It's coming from the church being okay with not dominating in certain realms of reality. If the church is okay with not... Look, we are the head and not the tails. That means we are to dominate in business. We are to dominate in entertainment. We are to dominate in, 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 in raising our families. Our families should be the, the best. There should not be a high divorce rate in Christianity. There should, our families, our husband, the, the men should adore their wives and take care of their children. They're, I mean, listen guys, there's so much that we could do if we would just stop playing around. But at the end of the day, who you listen to is ultimately who you serve. Mm -hmm. Who you listen to is who you serve. You can love God with your lips. You can serve God with your lips. But it does not mean you actually serve God. It absolutely does not mean if you're doing something other than... Now, I know this is going to say, like, okay, I need you to think. I need you to really think about this, okay? Use your brain now, because we, we're, we're so liberal in the church. You're talking about liberal in America. We're liberal in the church. We're liberal in the church. We're, that's where the liberal stuff's coming from, is because we're liberal in the church. I need you to think and use your brain. Speaking of that, um, go see the movie Unplanned. Like, you, you know how many Christians I have met? I didn't even know that many Christians, um, not even just believe, but actually support and push abortion and I that's 
beyond my understanding. But anyway, go see the movie Unplanned, so... Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the type of stuff that I'm talking about is other things, other things come in and, sh and, and distort the gospel. Like, 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 for, for example, you know, if, if you're black, you have to be a Democrat. And if you're white and you're a Christian, you have to be a Republican. And that's not true. If you're a Christian, you're going to stand up for what's right. If you're a Christian, you are for life. If you're a Christian, you are for truth. You have to know how to rise. The Bible tells me that Jesus, that the, that the government is going to rest on the shoulders of Jesus. This means when the, when the body of Christ is doing what it's supposed to do, and the body of Christ is stretched out around the world like it's supposed to be, it will be representing Christ on the cross and preaching the gospel, and the world will get the revelation of who Jesus is, not just by his coming, but by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony going across the globe and the government will be able to rest upon the truth that Christ is Lord that Jesus is Lord that's why every knee will bow and every tongue will confess when the body of Christ and the message of Christ when the will of God and the, let me tell you something people this is not an if this will happen this is a matter of when I need you to understand that this is already written we win don't be discouraged. You know, we win. The problem that I have is the the problem that I have is being in the mall and I'm standing there and literally watching Christians go, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. This is a great job. Even come up and touch the shirts and mess up the kiosk and make it look all silly. It's amazing how many people will come by the kiosk and then do nothing. But then they'll go into Foot Locker and spend like $400. <laughs> yes. It is It is unbelievable. Listen, folks, we're going to play a couple songs and we're going to be right back. <laughs> right back. Right back. <laughs> <He's doing that. laughs> we're having a good time. Yeah, I did. How can I be So what we're talking about is how we're going, what needs to be done to correct the church. How do we get our influence back in our communities? How do we get our influence back as the church? And we've got to understand that there are certain things that have to be put in place. Uh, and we've got enough churches. That's not the issue. What we need is churches that are truly committed, you know, to doing the will of God, not just... Uh, you know, okay with whatever, you know, uh, you know, just like I said, trend chasing. We don't need any more trend chasing churches. You know what I'm saying? We need churches that are really going to do what God called us to do. Um, and that's one of my concerns uh, is that we're okay with just anything. You know, uh, <laughs> the, the, that, that bothers me um, that, that we're no, then we got the thing over here. Okay. I'll this so we've got to get back to a place where we're serious with God. Uh, and the only way that's going to happen is when we are actually saying, hey, what, what, am, what am I contributing to the body of Christ? What are we actually contributing to uh, the will of God? Do, I re do you genuinely care about the salvation of others? Because that, that's, 
that's one of the things that people don't understand. It's still showing that, you know, scoot that over a little bit. <laughs> I think you should put it up there. Let's see here. I mean, we got so many. If, if you don't care about the salvation of others, okay. then you have to ask yourself, do you really care? Do hey, Chris, I was at, hey, Shanisha, how you doing? Do you All right, Pat, what's going on? Hey. We're having a good time up here. Duke, you can't hear, can you? No, huh? no. Huh? I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm like, do you want to put it up there? It might be easier so it doesn't keep falling. No, that, well, no, no. Where's your camera? That is. But it's not on you. Though. I know Everybody. it's falling, so I'm asking you to put it up there, please. Oh, to for, for, you see both of us? That's fine. Well, no, I just it's falling right here. So yeah, I just put it up there. Okay. Yeah. There. All right. Let's see. We're trying to. All right, Duke and the gang, we're back. I'm black. What's up with that? I can rap. Zip zap. <laughs> Hold on, folks. We're trying to get this. I feel like I shake my head at you a little bit. You do. You know why? Because you realize that you have to be... I just said the video ended. That's because you pushed to end it. Now you're starting uh, over. Yeah, I'll start it again, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's sorry. So that's no. oh man, I messed that up. All right, so what do I do? How do I fix this? Let me fix it. Ha <laughs> ha! Like you always have to do. I didn't say that. How you always have to fix my messes? I didn't say that. Whatever, dude. We Whatever, know, dude. <laughs> we we know what you mean. We those long sighs of Duke being Duke. Hey, today is my sister's two hundred and fortieth birthday. Uh, she, she's old, you know, and I just want to say happy birthday to Key Cheney on Facebook. You're an old woman. I love you. And you have a very, very big head. You know what I mean? My sister's head is enormous. Uh, and listen, I'm a little we brother. We also, this past week, we've been engaged for one year. <laughs> yes, we have. Uh, and you know what that, uh, I was thinking about that. You know, and everyone's like, when are you going to get, when are you going to get, date? when's the date, when's the date? And I'm like, are you going to help us pay some of our bills? Then shut up and mind your business. <laughs> you're so mean. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when, are you going to pay the bill? When are y'all going to see the deal? Hey, help us with some funds and then we'll, you know what I mean? Like, mind your business. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, know, you know, that's pretty funny though. Um, pin Ministries, let's go there. Let's talk about a little bit about pin. Okay, well, for those that didn't hear earlier... Um, Duke introduced me to Penn Ministries back in early summer of last year, and um, I just fell in love with it, but it's pinministry.org, www.pinministry.org, P-I-N, stands for People in Need. It's a ministry that's close to the ocean front out of Beach Church that helps the homeless and the really poor with medical care that they wouldn't usually get. Um, clothing, like coats in the winter, toiletries, love, food several times a week, um, AA style meetings. They help them um, learn through stuff like through their even dental. Class. Yeah, even dental. Pretty much all of their needs um, help the homeless become self sufficient. Like sometimes, like somebody might go to jail for various reasons. Um, make a mistake and then of course the jails just kind of put them out on the street when they're done and you know pen helps them they, they don't judge what they did in the past or even the present it's just helping souls get back on their feet and these people are absolutely wonderful the homeless people will come in and praise god and be so grateful and thankful for everything that they have yeah and i just absolutely love it but they always need volunteers but something you've been thinking about doing they have things several times a week for them, like breakfast on Saturday mornings, on Sundays, it's several hours of food, and they get clothing and love, and um, medical is a big one. Yeah. And you know, you know the, the, the thing about uh, Pin Ministries, listen, guys, it's not that they're doing something, like, profound. They're just doing what Christians are supposed to do. Yeah. You know, with love. Yeah, if, if you're a bored Christian, you're a wrong Christian. 
if, if you're a Christian that like there's nothing to do, there's always someone to share the gospel to. There's always, you know, and it, it's funny how, you know, I, it's funny how people just, you know, like they don't understand that we don't have a lot of time to waste, guys. We don't have time to waste. We cannot afford to keep saying, if, if, if you know, someone else will do it, someone else will do it, you know. You're supposed to do it. If God saved you, if you gave your life to Christ, you're supposed... You know, when Christ was on... Listen to this, guys. This is very important. When Christ was uh, doing the five loaves with the, the two pieces of bread and five fish and all that stuff, and five loaves of bread and two fish, when he, when he did that, the, the, the reason why he did that is hilarious. The disciples came up to him. They were like, hey, we only have this little bit of money. And they were like, what should we do? And then... They were like, are you, what are you going to do to provide? What can we do to provide? We can't do anything. They were basically sounding like, you know, like mere just mortals, men who had no authority. Like they, they weren't walking with Christ. And Christ kind of looked at them like, hey, have you not witnessed everything that we have already accomplished? Learn how to appreciate what God is doing in your life. I actually had to experience this myself, and I'm going to explain what I'm talking about in a second. So what happens is, when Christ says, you feed them. Peter, if you love me, you feed them. Let me tell you something. You were not saved just because you're cute and God likes you a whole lot and thinks you're so smart and cuddly. No, you were saved to share the gospel. Somehow, God has given you a unique ability to share the gospel. One of the reasons why uh, supporting Current FM is so important, they are expressing the unique way that God has showed them how to share the gospel. What's funny about this double-fold ministry is that Current FM not only shares the gospel, it got crazy people up here like me sharing the gospel, but modern music that actually can relate, a generation can relate to them. Ch listen, parents, if you want your children to grow up listening to Christian music, then put on Current FM. You want to know why? Because they're playing music that they can relate to. They're playing music that can that can impact. Like, I know a, I have a, a young man that came up to me and told me how long he's been listening to the show, that he grew up listening to the show, uh, and how, how his dad listens to the show. And he, 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 he doesn't know secular artists. He doesn't know any secular music. Everything he knows comes from Christian music. We've got to connect to one another and empower. So watch this. When Christian businesses connect with Christian media and we all support each other, what ends up happening is that we have now a secure platform to launch men and women of God from many different unique dimensions, from hip-hop and, you know, classic, from hymnals and gospel and contemporary. And, you know, we've, this is the power of unity. The Bible says that a, a three-fold cord is, is not easily broken. You know, one can chase a thousand and two ten thousand. There is power in unity, and the enemy has done a marvelous job in causing division in the body of Christ. I've watched Christians, and it's, this is the saddest thing that I've ever seen. I'll watch Christian, a Christian business will close, and then everyone goes, Oh, you're closing. I'm so sorry. I love it so much. I really love this store. I can't believe it's closing. Why is it closing? Because you didn't support when it was open. Oh, but it was so expensive. That's why. It's not about convenience. It's about purpose. Christians chasing trends and Christians chasing convenience is going to cause us to lose territory. Don't you know that the world knows this? Don't you know that the enemy knows that people will, you know, people will follow cheap things and, and, and actually, for the sake of convenience, abandon the will of God for the sake of convenience? There are a lot, of, and I need you to understand this. There are a lot of Christian businesses because they de depend on the support of families and depend on the support of people. What happens is they can't purchase products at the price that, say, secular companies can. So let's say uh, a Christian business, a Christian bookstore wants to buy a Joyce Meyer book. They can only purchase a certain amount of Joyce Meyer books based off their budget and support. However, a Walmart can buy an unlimited amount of Joyce Meyer's books at a better rate. So when Christians go to Walmart and they, you know, buy the $7 Joyce Meyer book because they could buy it at a bigger bulk, which causes the price to go down, and the Christian, the mom-and-pop Christian store, they can't. They have to, you know, it's twice as much, 
the reason why that happens is because one, the lack of support, and two, Christians have to be smarter than the 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 way of just doing business. We've got to be smart. We've got to understand. Then let me tell you why Christian businesses are so important, especially Christian bookstores. Let's say if the top ten Christian authors are preaching false doctrine, but that's all we have. That's all that's promoted because we don't support Christian businesses or Christian, uh, you know, uh, bookstores. That means now the world is being, they, they don't hear the voice of the local prophet. They don't hear the voice of the local preacher. This is why it's so important. Now there's a new wave, which is social media. Christians cannot afford to miss the opportunity to share the gospel uh, over social media. Listen, folks, go to currentfm.com and support Current FM. Support Current FM. Uh, this is Christian media. Send your donations in. $5, $10, $20, whatever. Send your donations and, and help us stay on the air. Help us make a difference. Go to um, You can also go to comingsoonjesus.org forward slash current FM. Get the Coming Soon Jesus shirt. And the portion, when you go to the Coming Soon Jesus forward slash current FM site, uh, the current FM gets $10 a shirt. We're do we donate $10 a shirt to current FM. So support your Christian media. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to you know, ruffle a little feathers right here. What you going to say? Well, you know, I understand why people are more loyal to uh, a lot of, like, say, Christian restaurants. I mean, I, I mean, secular restaurants. You know, you, you look, Christians love to go out to eat. Christians love to go out to eat. But Christians do not understand the importance of, of maintaining a gr good reputation such as tipping me and you have had this discussion uh, there's a there's unfortunately uh, there are single a lot of single moms or waitresses because that's uh, they, they try to make a lot of money they live off tips correct right and one of the problems is a, a group of Christians will come in and they won't tip Right. Do you understand the bad testimony you're that you're representing it? God? Anytime you do anything with anyone else, if you're out in public, no matter where you are, you're representing God. If you are a child of God, if you've been saved, part of your transformation is, you know, having good character, developing. And when you go out to a restaurant and you don't tip, you're tipping out of love. You're supposed to be showing love. If that person is on the verge of, you know, maybe believing, maybe not having questions, you know, you showing love and tipping your waitress or waiter can make a difference. You're representing God. Like, you, I think with everything, you need to ask yourself, like, would I do this or not do this if Jesus was standing right here in front of me? Yeah, I mean, it, listen, it is so important that every, every, look, there have been times people have done stupid stuff and I have completely let loose on them and then I look at myself and go, Oh wow, Pastor Duke. You know, or when I when when or me and Chris will get into an argument, Chris will say, And you're supposed to be a man of God. Oh, that gets the soul every time. You know what I mean? And it's just like, oh you know, let me tell you something. God has a right to hold us to a higher standard. He gave his only son to save us. So God has a right to hold us to a higher standard. I need you to hear that again. God has a right to hold people who claim to believe in him to a higher standard. You know what I mean? So you can play whatever games you want to play and pretend whatever you want to pretend. You can say whatever you want to say. I can't hold you to a higher standard. But God can hold you to a higher standard. He has a right mm -hmm. to hold you to... He, he sent his son to die for you. You know, uh, yes, we're taking questions on air. Uh, this is uh, Don Bullington. Um, the, she has a question, or he has a question. Uh, so, I don't know, if it's Don, is it the guy, guy, girl? I don't, I, can, I don't know what, let me see, let me see. Okay. I wanted your Facebook page. Okay, so yeah, uh, Don, how you doing? So we're, we are taking questions. Uh, we're on Facebook Live. If you have questions on Facebook, you just go to Coming Soon Jesus T-shirts and uh, you know and start engaging in the conversation. We would love to hear from you. We want to know what you think. If you think I'm church bashing, then that just means you're not listening to the show. And 
you're probably a knucklehead. Um, but it is what it is. So come on, let's go. Let's let's have a conversation. I would love to talk to you guys. Um, we are responding to uh, questions on Facebook, so you know, uh, you know, please feel welcome. You know, to, to interrupt anytime, interject. You know, uh, we are. I am just so you know. I answer questions honestly. Some people say, you know, I'm too honest, you know, but I, I don't care. So, they, like, I'm not scared of not now what I am. You know, um, really uh, so if you if you guys want to talk, let, let's chat up. I love you guys, and that's why, I, that's why I'm so honest. I love telling the truth. I love talking to you guys. Uh, so feel free to, to, to come to ask questions and things like that. It, it's, it's awesome. Um, anyway, one of the things that I've noticed in America, in American culture, is we think that it's okay to just lie and we think you know lying is normal like when you start walking to people like oh, everybody tells lies you know like everybody tells lies. like that's not okay and it's not even normal if there are people that actually still believe in the word of god and i think the enemy has done a good job promoting the idea that there are no longer people that follow the word of god it, or when people say, I'm human, it's not it yeah. sin. Well, if you've been saved, um, the whole point is to become more and more like, like Christ. <laughs> exactly. You, know? <laughs> and you that's... don't have to sin because you're human. You don't have to. Yeah. I mean, grace is there. But that doesn't mean you have to use That's it. like, <laughs> let me show you what God told me grace was. God showed me that grace is like a body cast that allows you to still function while you're going through the salvation process. Okay, so that's what grace is. But imagine, imagine if you could walk with no problem, but everybody just putting on cast on their arms and legs and just for no reason, just everyone just in wheelchairs for no reason. Right. You know, just there's no reason. That's not grace. That's abuse. And 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 Christ, listen, I, I want to make this clear. There is no scripture in the Bible where God is okay with sin. Where God says, ah, yeah, just, just go ahead. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. There's no, God is not okay with sin. But you know what? What's, what's, what's sad is that people will settle for grace. Grace is awesome. Without grace, we couldn't be saved. Grace is amazing. But don't settle for grace when you can walk in the fullness of God. God is not trying to hold back. The God's not saying, hey, you can't go any further because, you know, you can't go any further because I just don't want you to. I just, I just don't want you to. There's no need to go further. You can go as far in God as you want to. And don't worry about it. I know there are going to be people who are upset with you that you're going deeper in God than they are. Look, I got to take a quick break. We're going to be right back in about, well, 30 seconds. <laughs> Got to play this uh, legal ID. Got to play the legal ID. Got to play the legal ID. Current FM. Not touch screen. Kip if I do it every time. <laughs> Feel better now? WJLZ, Current FM. I want you to hear this. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto him, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deliver many, and to shall deceive many. He says, shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See not that you are troubled. 
For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated among all nations for my name's sake. And then shall be, uh, many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because of iniquity shall abound, uh, because, and because of iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endures until the end shall be saved. He that endures until the end shall be saved. He that holds on to his faith. He that holds on to the love of God. He that holds on to truth. He that holds on to reality. He that holds... You, listen, I got something to tell you. I don't care how much you want to be a woman. If you are a man, you are a man. If you are a woman, you are a woman. It does not matter what you think. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not hate speech. Reality is not hate speech. I don't care what you think. If you jump off of a bridge, you're not going to go up. Right, and, and that doesn't say, like, when you believe the Bible word for word, you know, that that's God's word, that doesn't mean that you don't love homosexuals. We still are supposed to love them and reach out to them and hug them and be there for them. Right. Just like anybody else, that the, the woman that just went in to have an abortion, that's when she needs love the most, you know. Um, because, you know, unless you're completely sin free in your life and have done nothing wrong, then your sin really isn't that much different than somebody else's. It's just you choose not to sin that way. Right. This is what I'm saying, folks. You've got to get this through your head that we're not here to condemn anybody, but we are here to bring light into a dark world. The the less people hear the gospel, the more dysfunctional people become. It's like, that it simple. It's a war right now for souls. Like, it really is. And that's our job. Once you become a believer and you give your life to God, you are literally giving your life to God to do what he wants you to do for the rest of your life. And you're serving him and other people. That's the whole point of why we're here. Once you are starting, you know, to transform, the entire point of existence is to serve God and to serve others. Yeah, and, and I want to make this clear because uh, I, I made a post, post on Facebook uh, talking about how discouraged I was at the behavior of uh, believers and the lack of support of. I gotta make sure my shirt's down because last time Chris had to Chris had to text me a message like Duke, your butt is showing on Facebook. Yeah, uh, I had my I under, wasn't yeah, she was having back pain issues, and I was watching him, and I kept uh, calling and texting. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, your butt is showing. We can see your underwear on Facebook, and I was like, oh my god, uh, it was so funny. Uh, so listen to what I'm saying, people. I, I made this post. Now I need you to understand that I made the post because. I look at how distracted the body of Christ is. And I'm sitting there at the mall like, listen, guys, I need, let me get this. I'm going to paint this picture for you so clearly. I, I was not discouraged as if God was not going to do something. I was discouraged because of the people of God. I was discouraged. Like, don't the people of God know that it's important for us? As long as that mall is open, we need to be there sharing the gospel. And we, are, we depend on you Coming to the kiosk, and of course, it's our responsibility. Well, I think we explain a little bit, like people that don't know. Coming soon, Jesus is. Um, oh, of course, it's a brand. Um, a lot of our things say "coming soon" on the front, and it's a way of evangelizing because people say, "Well, what's coming soon?" And you turn around and show them Jesus. And right. It always. And the key response. is that the key is that their guard is down because they asked you. Right. And it helps people uh, to evangelize that normally are scared to get the conversation right. so started. It, it helps the person evangelizing and the person that asks, it, it helps start a conversation without going up to people and just, you know, like, excuse me, let me talk to you. This way it starts a conversation either way. And a lot of times, um, you know, believers will be, yes, yes, that's great. And then other people, you'll be like, oh, oh, okay. But it gets them thinking and they might ask questions and it's really a way to evangelize. And um, some people don't like the coming soon on the front. So we have some the other way where Jesus is on, on the front, front yeah. coming soon on the back. And 
Um, either way, it really does start a conversation, but that's how it started. But we are also adding in, you know, some other Christian t-shirts, gift ideas. Um, but what we do in the mall, it's not, it's a different than other um, Christian companies that sell different stuff. It's more of a ministry. Like Yeah, that's, um, that's why we need your support so we much. We like being right in the middle of the mall. People come in there, people will come in there in tears and they just kind of gravitate to the kiosk because they see the name of Jesus. Um, there was this autistic, um, he looked like about 19 or so, autistic boy one day. And oh my gosh. He had lost, and he just came and stood at the kiosk and we're like, are you okay? And I could tell immediately um, he was autistic and he was like, I need my mom, I can't find my mom. And so we asked and he actually knew his mom's number and so we called his mom and she came to the kiosk but he looked really scared and it was like he just felt comfort he knew that's where he could go and it, it happened so many times people just look up a girl you know looked up and saw um whose book was it it was uh, yes pongo the, pongo no the, the other one a long time ago i think it might have been janet garcia's book or something and um oh also oh, healing the, the broken, broken heart of yeah Rebecca yeah Lambert. and she was like i was just looking for a book just praying that i would find a book and that would help my daughter who is you know going through a divorce and she just looked up and right after she <laughs> prayed that there was this book i had just put the book on the kiosk for the first time i just put the book on the kiosk and the lady comes walking around the corner and goes I just, she said, this is not possible. I just prayed and asked, what can I do to heal my daughter's broken heart? Like, God, please give me an answer to how to heal my daughter's broken heart because she's going through this divorce. And she just stood in front of the book, like, right. in amazement. And then, like, another time a girl um, came here with a friend to the area from South Carolina, I believe. Yes. And, and um, she was crying and, you know, really upset because she come all the way here. She had no money for a job with her friend while well, her friend abandoned her here and she didn't have a way home and she didn't have help. So, you know, we were able to help her. And um, sometimes we just, you know, do worship at the kiosk, prayer right at the kiosk. You know, people have come there that just lost their loved ones. And it's just hope in the marketplace. It's where if they don't want to stop off into a church or it's in the middle of the week when the churches are closed, we're there. And that and that's we want to be a support system to churches. That's why we even encourage churches, bring pastors, listen, bring information about your church to the kiosk and we will put it in people's bags. We will share about great churches. We want to promote you guys. We want to help. We want to make sure that you guys are supported. If you don't support us, then then you're going to keep dealing with the same problems that you've already been dealing with. And then some people, like, when we have, because Duke is retired military, and sometimes he has to pay out of pocket just for us to be there on slow months. And people are like, well, I, you know, maybe that's a sign. God might be giving you a sign to shut it down. But I don't believe that. We have to have faith. I believe God wants us in the marketplace. And um, it's so stressful because we're not there to make money. Like, people think, I mean, I have degrees in business. I'm a numbers girl. I like making money, but that's not the real purpose. In fact, where we want to make the money is so that we can donate to other people. Like there's a right. orphanage in Uganda that you know we're helping, and um, so many different things. Like we want to be able to help the current more. We want to be able to help Penn. We want to be able to help so many people in this area, and we want to do that by raising money. Um, through the kiosk in the middle of the marketplace. And we're also really considering opening up yep, you know, yeah, a yeah. store where we can do more, um, you know, ministry, more one-on-one, -on -one, helping people um, with all kinds of different things. That well, well yeah, for like, uh, and, and this is what I'm saying is that you guys, when you guys support us, you're giving us the ability to support others. That's really what it is. You know, like you can actually, you can go to Facebook and actually see where your money is going. You can see what we're doing. We want you to be able to see it. Uh, we want, you know, like. Yeah, we're not just there making money for us trying to get rich off of, you know, Jesus t-shirts. That's not it. We don't get, like Duke is such a hard worker. He, I, I used to be there a lot, but now life is taking me all kinds of places. I'm there, but just not every day all the time. But Duke is mostly there, open to close every day, seven days a week, and he is not there to make money. Like he doesn't draw paychecks from the business or anything. He is such a giver. Most of the money that's made 
after expenses, go, he just gives away. You know, we give away to different places. So he also gives away merchandise. So when you come up there, if he tries to give you something and I'm not there, just say, um, you know, Duke, are you supposed to be doing this? Right. Because you're you'll see a baby. If you bring your baby up there, he's going to give you a onesie. That is so true. She's not lying about that. I ordered, I think it was 25, 24 onesies. And um, the sales, I think I see in there that we've sold five, but we got like 12 left. That doesn't add up. <laughs> so I know he's been giving them away again. It's so, he just says, oh, baby, it's cute. Here, have a one. It's a baby. It's Doesn't a baby. Doesn't know if the parents right, would so, ever let well, the baby well, 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 let me explain something. Let me explain why. Well, let me explain why. Is that here's what happens. When I see a child, and I, I know how this life is, so I'm like, if I can get them in the onesie, right? If I can get the mm -hmm. child in the onesie, when... 15 years, 20 years from now, when that child looks a picture of them and they see themselves in a onesie as a baby, they're going to go, wow, this is what my purpose was. I remember now. I was born to serve God. Or it, it, can, it, can, it. it can trigger some. He so, gives it to children, but it's not just that. He gives it to 15-year-olds, <laughs> 30-year-olds, 60-year-olds. Like, it doesn't matter. That's true. When he... Pastor Ruby. Okay. Pastor Ruby's watching. Away. Pastor Ruby L. Brown White <laughs> is watching. And, and uh, Pastor Ruby's one of the people that encouraged me. Uh, listen, I was the, 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 I'm going to tell you guys something. Now, I don't know how many people hung in there the whole show, but you're going to hear this. Uh, everyone that prayed for me when I was really discouraged, I put it out there that I was discouraged. I'm going to tell you what happened today. Today, this actually happened. I was terribly discouraged in the body of Christ. I was terribly discouraged. This deaf guy walks up. And he's like, I cannot believe you guys are doing this in the mall. We had a great conversation. And I told him how discouraged I was. And he said, with his ear. Now, Janet Garcia said up there, you better listen to God. And this guy looks me in the face. He goes, you better listen to me. Now, he's deaf. He goes, you better listen to me. He's like, what you're doing is powerful, and it's gonna, it's blessing a lot of people. And God is going to triple and quadruple this ministry. And he's like, what you're doing is powerful. Do not change. He said, he said, you know, let just trust God. Keep your faith. And he, he encouraged me. And I was like, I hear you, man. <laughs> but I'm not feeling it right now. I just, I was like, I hear you, man. I thank you for your prayers. Uh, uh, you know, and, and it kind of like with everyone, even when you were trying to encourage me, I, I was so discouraged. But I see the encouragement. But it just looked like lip service. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we encourage you. Now a lot yeah, of you. Yesterday he was so discouraged. He was actually getting on my nerves. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. I, I was a big baby yesterday. I was a big baby, and I saw these. People putting these messages on this, the scriptures encouraging me. And it was like, okay, God, I see that. Um, I have the faith. I have the faith in God, but I need faith in the people. Now, I want to tell you this revelation that God gave me. He told me this. He said, when you do something on one, when you do something for God, when you, when you obey God, there's a certain level of faith that's required. And as the vision grows, you have to increase your faith. You can't have faith for yesterday, today. Your faith has to increase with you daily. So not only do you kill the flesh daily, but you increase your faith daily. If God got you through yesterday, he will get you through today and tomorrow. Right. All right? Now, this the deaf guy, he he, he comes up and he, he's talking to me, and I'm... I can see he's on fire for God. He's like, you got to believe. You got to speak life. You got to speak the word. And, he's, and I was like, did Jenny Garcia send you? Because <laughs> he was like, who sent you? Why are you here? It's it's, he's like, you got to speak faith. And I started speaking faith. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm just going to agree with you. You're right. You know, he leaves. He brings me about four books that I'm absolutely going to read. He leaves. And then he gives me an envelope. And in the envelope, it's about $600 in the envelope. $660? Yeah, $650. So it's like $650 in the envelope. That was the exact amount of money we needed to pay, to pay the rent. For the kiosk. For the kiosk. We had no idea how we were going to pay the rent. And I was just like, we're going to get kicked out. They're gonna, I mean, like, you know how embarrassing that is as a Christian? In... Regent University is right down, like, around the corner from us, and we're at risk of getting kicked out each month because, you know, 
the way I love region. We, 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 it's so low. The support is so low. So he, so this guy comes out of nowhere and gives us $650. Now, I didn't ask him for it. He just shared, I just told him how discouraged I was. I was like, we don't get a lot of support, you know, uh, but we're here to share the gospel. I was like, the only place where the kiosk is painful is financially because we can't afford it. Like, we can't, like, we, and, you know, and God, now, it unfortunately. Too, where God is also working. Um, we are in a mall in Greenboro Mall, which I also want to go to Lynn Haven because I love Lynn Haven Mall, but um, Greenboro Mall, really, like, they let us have a worship time in the mall um, that went, you know, viral, like the video. Um, they've helped us in so many ways, but they really want us there so much that they they want us to stay, that they're dropping the rent again. They have one time, but yeah, they want the, to the, do it again. And I think that's God's way of telling us that we need to be in the marketplace like someone does. We need to be in the marketplace. And so the mall really wants us there. Um, so it's not like one of these situations where we're fighting a mall. Like Greenboro Mall, if you're going to support a mall, please support them too. I know there's a lot of stores closing and stuff, but as a Christian, like the most of the leaders in the mall are Christians. Um, most of them are. They're, they're really great people, and they really do want the name of Jesus in the middle of the mall, and that you don't find too often. And also, if we, we do, we are developing an investment program where you can invest into the company. The company's called Child of God Ministries Incorporated, and you can invest into it and get a return on your investment. Look, we are trying everything in our power to empower the body of Christ, and, and we and want... And we also are going to start a non-profit part for, like, when we do the Orphanage and Uganda and pen and stuff like that where if you donate to us like you get your tax tax rate yeah for you and stuff so we are gonna also open a non-profit part of the company because that's important, but we, we're, we're trying to build a team of on-fire people. Listen, I'm calling you out. If you are on fire for God, there is a place for you in the company. We just need to figure out how to develop that place. We want you to be a part of it. We have vision. We have a platform. We have so much in store for you. We need to build a healthy team. We want to build the body of Christ, but we need people that are on fire for God who get it to say, hey, let's do this thing. Let's make this thing happen. Who want to be territory takers. Acres and do the let's build the kingdom of God. I believe that a lot it, it would be easier to expose false prophets, false teachers, and false preachers when we support those who are doing it the right way. When we are empowering, you know, the men and women of God. I it, it breaks my heart when I see genuine, authentic men and women of God being drowned out by the voices of a bunch of Goomba knuckleheads who have no anointing, but just, you know, you can get a bank loan and say that God anointed you to do something. You, you know, the, the Bible tells us to beware of deception in the last days. We cannot afford to give in to deception in these last days. And the but only... It's going to be evil. Evil is going to be good. Right. And it's totally like that. Like, um... So many people are calling those that don't believe in late-term abortion um, evil. Like, they're calling us evil for not believing in or not wanting late-term abortion. Right. And it's like, it's so confusing to me. It's like, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone sometimes. Like, Which, by the way, we are doing a campaign where we're asking everybody, even if you don't have a baby, we're asking everyone to get the baby onesies. Get the baby onesie, Coming Soon Jesus onesies. Order them and post them on the Coming Soon Jesus t-shirt page just to support, just to show your yeah, yeah. your love for children, your, that we're praying for the unborn. We're praying for the and unborn. we make donations, you know, for, like, um, for every, you know, child, children's shirt. Onesie, yeah, onesie. the onesie. And we have children's shirts also. But just also some of our other shirts on the um, kiosk, one is um, pray for the unborn, period. Yes. And simple, but... Right now, I think it's really effective. And then um, one that says, my heart belongs to Jesus. Duke designed this amazing one. It says Genesis 1, and it has a picture of um, the earth on it. I love that shirt. Oh, and I'm a Bible kind of girl, and I'm a Bible kind of guy with a Bible on the front of the shirt. So, <laughs> And then we're also going to be adding in other Bible verses and a lot of different things. Yeah, and, and, now, and I, need, I need you guys to understand that we want to stay in the mall, ultimately, we do. Uh, but we've got to, without your support, 
Uh, we, I mean, you just can't make it. We just can't just make like it. Just like Current FM can't make it without your support. Right. Listener supported. And matter of fact, when this is what's so cool. When you support us, you're helping us support Current FM, but you can support Current FM directly. Right. Um, you know, God has done miracle after miracle for both Current FM and Coming Soon Jesus. That's why we yeah. partner together. We love each other. And, and, you know, she is a phenomenal person. And when I was going through this dark period, uh, you know. Uh, she, he means she, Yes, and, and <laughs> Annie V, Annie V, you know, she is a, a miracle. Annie V has, has helped me. Uh, she believed in me even when I was going through this dark time. And and that's what I'm talking about. It's like believers really being there for each other. And she's uh, a redhead like me. So. She is a redhead. She is a redhead. But, guys, listen, I need you to understand something. That what we're talking about right now is changing, the like evolving as a church, as spiritual entities evolving and ultimately becoming who God called us to be. That's that's what it's all about, is becoming who God called us to be and acknowledging that we have to do a better job at making a difference. Our job is to make a difference. Listen, God is not confused about who he called us to be. God knows exactly who he called us to be. And if we listen, if we obey God, if we trust God, if we, if we just say, hey, you know what, I want to... Like, give it a chance. You know, the Bible give God a chance. Tells us a lot about who God is, and um, one of the things is it says He is our strength. Y- like, yes, He is strength. So <laughs> it's like if right. He is our strength, leaning on Him, we can't fall. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is that listen, I, I want to make something clear to you. Belief is where we get our instructions. Our directives, our uh, our understanding, our concept of life, our principles, that is our belief. We put our faith in what we believe. Now, faith, now, and I need you guys to pay very close attention. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That is just saying what faith is. That's saying that the, what, what that, whatever that substance is, we're calling it faith. We now know that, that what that substance is, is energy. The, if you put all of your energy into God, God is not going to hold anything back from you. You will maximize your existence. You will become everything that God wants you to become. You will maximize your purpose. You, you will, God is not trying to trip you up. If you put your faith a little bit here and a little bit there, you're going to get those results. But you get in, you get out what you put in. Right. The, the Bible tells us in many places to seek God. Yes. To seek his presence. The more you seek him, the more peace you will find. And I know that, like, firsthand. The more you seek God, the more peace you will find. Because the worldly troubles that you have really are not as hard to face when you have God. And so, really, to me, faith is also seeking God. Yes. It just... Continuing it, it, to seek God in, in whatever situ- closer, in whatever right? situation, seeking God in whatever situation. Like I told you, the people at Penn, you would think that people being homeless, you know, they would be bitter and not happy. But these people come in, not all of them, but a lot of them go into the sanctuary and seek God. They praise Him and praise Him and thank Him. Um, for all of their blessings, when they are carrying around like a plastic bag with their only, you know, outfit, a one change of clothes, no money, going back to the shelter. This week, the winter shelter's closed. So they're going to be back on the streets 24 hours a day. There is nowhere for them to sleep. They're sleeping on park benches, the benches at the beach, the street, trying to stay out of the rain, getting soaking wet. The nights are still freezing cold. Um, I think tonight it's getting into the 30s. So, and they, they have to experience that. And they're still seeking God. They go into the sanctuary and lift their hands and pray and cry and thank God for everything that he's doing for them. We don't have an excuse. No, we don't. And, th- and this is where we've got to understand that God does have, again, God has a right to hold us accountable. He does. Mm-hmm. And, and he should hold us accountable because when you don't hold human beings accountable, what do they say? The cat will play when the mice is around. Well, no, say the mice will play. The mice cats will play away. when the cat's away. That's ex- and it's so true. It's it's so true. When 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 we feel like we we can get away with stuff, 
That's exactly what we try to do. And, and God knows that. That's why God can hold us accountable. And he does hold us accountable. And we've got to understand that when we, it's not like God is trying to hurt us. He's trying to empower us. Do you guys get that? That God is not trying to hurt us. He's trying to empower us. He wants to, he wants, he wants us to be our best. There's nothing wrong with God wanting us to be our best. There's nothing God wanting us to, my kids said they love, they said, good night, dad, love you, dad. I love you, babies, too. I love you guys. Uh, but God wants us to be our best. Do you know why God wants us to be our best? Because he knows what he's capable of through us. That's, that's the thing, is that you got to understand that God knows that he did not make a mistake when he made you. We'll be right back. Music. New music now. Matthew Parker. Good memories. That's loud. All right. So, one of the things that happened... Uh, I, once again, listen, this is, this is the third time this has happened. I know that uh, some of you are like, Duke, when are you going to get the point? I, but it's not that easy. I, I wanna, I wanna, I'm not justifying anything. I want to I wanna make this clear. So the first time I was going to shut the kiosk down, uh, someone came and bought $12,000 worth of shirts. Uh, and they helped us to get out of so much many issues that we were having they helped us in a very big way then the next time i was going to shut down someone donated eighteen thousand dollars oh no before that oh, somebody so, else yeah um, howard Look, howard, D howard martell he, he donated twelve hundred dollars mm -hmm. then someone else donated eighteen thousand dollars and then in so, the process of that too there was a lot of other um because it is a ministry um like um the um the girl gave the three hundred. Yeah, the, the three hundred. Yeah. And then um, when there was the book signing, Danette Crawford. Danette Crawford. A lot of the, the people that are on the vendors. She had the Jesus they, counter. Yeah, the weekend. Jesus counter. They, oh, it was this Saturday. It was this weekend. It was this weekend. I wanted to go. Yeah, the they they the actually photo. told us to keep whatever sold because we were going through such a hard time. There's so many people have blessed us. So it, it's but what happens is when there's these dark moments where we don't know what's gonna. It's like I trust God. But the people of God are like, oh my goodness. And today, this guy who's deaf, he comes up and he has a hearing, a hearing aid. And he says, he tells his testimony, shares his testimony. And I told him, he was like, you have to stay in the mall. What you guys are doing is amazing. What you guys are doing is so great. And then he gives us $650, which is exactly what we needed to be able to pay the rent. Uh, and... He has no idea that that's the exact amount that we actually needed to pay the rent. So we saw another miracle today. Um, and, and, you know, I'm just saying, I love the miracles of God. But I want to see the body of Christ in its proper position doing what it's supposed to do. That's my dream, is to see the body of Christ manifesting itself, doing what it's supposed to do, supporting missionaries. Missionaries should not be worried about, about where money's going to come from, and pastors should not be worried about where money's going to come from. We've got to support the men and women of God and help them do what God's called to do. They, they shouldn't worry about... There's so many people who are constantly worried about money, and it's like the body of Christ, when you're doing the genuine work of God, the last thing you should be worried about is money. That's why we've got to support the men and women of God, visionaries of God, our Christian musicians, our Christian authors, our churches, our pastors. The body of Christ is valuable and the same way blood flows through your body, through your every vein has a has a responsibility to get that blood to, you know, to the toes, to the feet, to the fingers, to the brain, to every part of your body. Those We've got to make sure that the body of Christ is able to get what it needs. We're about to go back on air. Yeah. Mm. All right. So WJLZ, Current FM. Uh, we were just off here. Now, let me tell you the benefit of, of watching uh, Going to Coming Soon Jesus t-shirts and watching the broadcast on Facebook uh, and on YouTube now. We're, we're on YouTube. We're trying to build our social media. Subscribe to 
us on, uh, let's see, it's, it just says, coming soon, uh, you'll see the black car with the coming soon Jesus on it. Um, it's just, I just, I guess it's just coming soon. Is that the channel? Just coming soon? That's what the channel is, coming soon. Uh, so, just go to, you know, like us on Facebook. Um, hey, Becca, oh, Becca, 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 Becca. What up, Becca? Becca says she loves us. We love you too, Becca. Every time I go into one of my little hissy fits, Becca <laughs> is right there. She's Good like, uh, yes, yes. Becca, thank you so much. Uh, what else is that? We got Michael Smith. Michael Smith is watching. Michael, yeah, one of the greatest musicians of all times. He's like responsible for pretty much every Christian song we see. Michael, what's going on, man? It's good to see you, man. Uh, like, what are the musicians, real quick? Y'all should look up Duke songs on <laughs> YouTube. Like, he, he, you should listen to him. He, he's a closeted musician. But like, yes, guy. I went with him one time to the um, studio when he was recording a song, and I was like, wow. Yeah. That's when I decided to marry him. <laughs> You're funny. Becca, what are you doing, Becca? That's, she said, that's what I'm here for. That's right. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, you know, when I see God doing miracles, you know, it, it is encouraging, okay? It, it does restore me. But I can tell you what the biggest, the biggest encouragement of all is when, when someone who's been called to do the will of God and the humanity wears them out. They're tired. They're broken. And they, they run out of strength. And the brothers and sisters in Christ come up and pick them up. There's nothing more empowering than that. Like, I, like when, when that happens to me, it's like, okay, I remember. It's that Rocky moment. Dun, 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 you know, you're like, you get all pumped up. You're like, yeah, let's, let's do this thing, you know. But it's so funny. Because each time I think I'm down for the count, a believer will come and pray for me. And all of a sudden I have this rejuvenated strength. I have this like this drive and I'm like, you know what? Nothing is ever going to stop me again. However, I run out of energy again. And it's, it's, it's amazing how I'm, I have personally experienced how powerful it is when men and women of God Come together and believe in you. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Herman Whitfield is on board. He's listening mm -hmm. or watching on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, we are here to, to to encourage you. We're here to talk reality. We, we, we're here to share the gospel. We want to see people blessed. Uh, so join us, you know, make you know, check us out. Uh, it, it, just so you know. Oh, by the way, if you're a musician, if you're a Christian musician, you know, submit your music to Current FM. Submit your music. Uh, you, you, you know, we play all types of music. You know, uh, if you're a pastor, this is a great, if you're a pastor, this is a great station to have your ministry on. Uh, have your ministry on Current FM. It's currentfm.com, 88.5 FM, 97.9 FM, 103.7 FM, and 103.9 FM. We have four FM dials. That's taking territory. Plus, you're, you're here, or heard on... Uh, Online, so make sure that you are supporting. Now, I want to get back to this word because I think it's it's so important for you guys to hear this. I want, I want to make sure you guys check this out. This is some powerful stuff right here. Um, now, some of you are going to say that you know this scripture. All right, listen to this in John chapter eight. Uh, in John chapter eight, uh, verse twelve. Jesus said, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I need, you may, you may be confused, but Jesus is not confused. Do you understand what I'm saying? Get this, get this. Christ is saying, if you, follow me, you will not walk in darkness. It, it bothers you. Sinning for you, if you follow Christ, sin is actually difficult for you. It should be a problem. If you're okay with sin, 
there is a possible chance that you're actually walking in darkness and just really thinking about the light. You're actually walking in darkness, but the light doesn't bother you. You're actually walking in darkness, but you're all right. Like you, you're okay with the light. You acknowledge that light exists, but you're not walking in the light. <laughs> Sin, if you're walking in darkness, then you're just walking in darkness. But Christ makes it clear. We got William Savage is here. Is that Savage? That's William Savage. Okay. All right, so we got William Savage. But what's up, William? So check this out. This is, this is some phenomenal stuff. This is some phenomenal stuff. You don't have to be confused about where you stand. You know, all you have to do is just ask yourself, are you walking in light or are you walking in darkness? Are you walking? If you're walking in darkness, then that's the reason why you're stuck in sin. If you're walking in light, that's the reason why sin bothers you. If sin does not bother you, if you, if, you know, it, it amazes me how so many people just justify their sin. And, and I'm telling you right now that eventually it's going to catch up with you. I, I have to talk, tell you this, and I, and, I, and I don't want people thinking that I'm doing the uh, old, uh, what do you call it, uh, fire and brimstone thing. Um, the reason why I'm so concerned about people is because I often think, am I doing everything that I could to please God. Because at the end of the day, when I'm standing before God, it's going to be me and God. And I need to know that God is pleased with me because God is a God of truth. And when he says, well done, good and faithful servant, I want that to be true. Because God is a God of truth. God is not going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, if it's not true. Now listen to this. <laughs> uh, this is what the, the scriptures say. In verse 10, Ephesians 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. You guys with me? Ephesians 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, verse 10. We're, here we go. You know, uh, and I, I need you to understand that this is, uh, this is some, some real stuff here. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. But put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Above all, taking on the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I need you to understand. <laughs> Ephesians 6, chapter 10. <laughs> uh, you're funny. You're funny, Becca. She's like, what's that verse again? Now listen to this. The reason why he says take on the shield of faith is because you may not know how to yield a sword. The word of God is a sword. But if you can hold on to your faith, he's saying this. And this is amazing. He's saying there has to be a mobile device that can protect you from all sides so your faith can defend you in areas that you may be weak in. You're, sometimes you may not know the answer, but you're just going to trust God. Sometimes you may not know what to do, so you just trust God. You, you may not. This is where a lot of people mess up. They'll try to come up with answers. Instead of just trusting God, 
Sometimes you don't know because you don't know. And the answer for you in that moment is your faith. So if the word gets knocked out of your hand, the sword gets knocked, you still have your faith. That's why it's called the shield of faith, because the faith will protect you. You know, the, the, the shield is just as important. Study uh, ancient history. The shield is just as important as the sword is. Uh, because you, when you, the, if you're fighting from the front and the enemy attacks from the back, you can turn and protect yourself from the back. That's why it's called it because it's a mobile mechanism of protection that walks with you. And as you grow in God, you will work your shield of faith better. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 very important. It's, it's extremely important that you do that. The Bible says. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not hearing your cousin Mookie and Pookie. Can you think of an instance when you stayed in the faith? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so check this out. There were several, okay, a couple years ago, matter of fact, a couple years ago, when I went a little loony, I went a little loony on on Facebook and I went a little loony. I almost, I had, I almost even had the opportunity to become an alcoholic, I was going down a, such a dark, dark road, such a dark, dark path. And uh, Crystal said to me, I made up my mind to self-destruct. And Crystal says to me, uh, after I've completely humiliated myself, Crystal says, I'm excited to see what God does with you in your next chapter. When she did that, it motivated me and stimulated me in a way where it, it, it reactivated my faith because I remembered that God doesn't give up on us. The only reason I was willing to give up is because I, I, I was like, how, how, who is going to ever trust me again to preach the gospel? Who's ever going to listen to me again? Who's ever going to do, you know, I, I, so many people watched me make a fool out of myself on Facebook and all this other stuff that I was so humiliated. I was like, I started thinking that God thought about me the way I thought about me. And when you spoke those words, I'm excited to see what you reminded me that God does not leave us nor forsake us. That God, it was the, the word of God started to like activate in my life. The word of God started to activate. There was a time when when uh, when my kids went to live with their mom, I thought I was never gonna be able to like have to wake up and be with my kids again. Now my kids live with me, but I had to keep believing. I had to keep believing. Then, then of course, just recently, you know, not knowing how we were gonna pay the rent, you know, what happens? God sends another miracle, and and, and you know, I I don't I I don't pretend to be like. You know, uh, like it didn't mean anything because it, it does mean something to me. Because every time God does something like that, it's like, son, I'm with you. Right. And I love that because I feel his presence, not because it was in the form of money, but be, just because he moved. Mm-hmm. Because he, he did something. He could have he said, hey, listen, I just wanted to bless you and give you, you know, give me a hug. I, I've seen it so many times. Like, I do not stress it. Uh, and you know I don't. Like, no, you, she's like, telling the I, truth. I don't stress it. I just stay because I know God's going to do something. God's going to do it. Like, yeah, and he's going to do it. Like, I know that all the time. Even in my personal uh, life, I know God's going to help. He's going to be there. He's my father. He's not going to leave me stranded. And even if he doesn't give me what I want at that moment, he's preparing me for something yeah. that he wants for me. Yeah, and you know, and that's the thing is that I also... I, when I uh, went through that dark period, I was just like, who is going to take a broken pastor who's been, you know, devastated by, you know, foolishness, who's going to take him serious? And, and, and then, you know, God sent you into my life in such a wonderful way. I needed you so much. And uh, I, I needed to know that I hadn't just thrown everything away. And that's when you stepped in, you know, and so... Oh, it's crazy. I was like, hey, listen, I'm extremely broken. I told her that. And you've been, it wasn't just like it was that one dark day. Like, you've been with me through my process of healing, you know? And I feel the same way when my ex-husband just decided he didn't want to be married anymore and left. Like, 
I was like, okay, you know, I was married. I'm just going to live alone for the rest of my <laughs> life and just be a grandmother and, you know, like yeah. one day, not, not, not yet. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, just live for God. And um, I guess God. But what's funny is how, how it happened. Like our conversations were all about the gospel, mm-hmm. the word of God. So yeah, we were friends for a few years before. And that we was what together, that's and we were always, always talking, talking about, about the word of God, God and, and yeah. reading the Bible and And I think that's that's what the positive. situation is, is it being positive, speaking life to each other and you know, believing because the best. Because we had God in our friendship before we even had a relationship. So I think that that's what stirred things up, you know what I mean? I think that is what stirred things up, is that God was like in the midst of it and we made that covenant that we would keep God in the center of our relationship. And, and what's funny is that all of my dreams, like my entire life, guys, in case you didn't know, uh, my entire life, I've only wanted to be three things. I wanted to be a true man of God, a great father, and a great husband. That's all I've ever wanted because that's everything my dad is. Right. So that's what I want it to be. I and, think one night when we were just friends, we were on the phone, and um, you made a comment. You said, I pray for my future wife every night. And we were just friends at that point, but I think that's when I started kind of... Well, it also had to do with my smoking hotness. <laughs> yeah. It also had to do with of that. Of course. Let's yeah. not forget. Let's not forget that. That's and, uh, funny. You know, but, but realistically, I, there was a big part of my life that I thought... That was like, God, there's no way anybody's going to want to be with me. And, uh, like realizing that God cares about us more than we can understand. Like, you're not some loser. You're not so far gone. Like, God, there's, God will bring you what you need. He will bring you what you need. Don't give up on God because he won't give up I on you. I think he will as long as you remain humble. Yeah. Okay, so let me, well, that is this. Okay, let's, pride will destroy right. everything. Pride, pride, because, listen. God gives grace to the humble and he resists the proud. However, I want to tell you guys something real quick about this. Do not lie to yourself. God will never approve sin. Please, please capture this. Capture what I'm saying. Do not make peace with sin. It will betray you every time. Sin will betray you every time. I know that the, um, you've got to be able to cipher through this culture. America is not, it's, it's not a Christian nation anymore. Right. America is not a Christian nation anymore. America can be. America needs to repent. But before America can repent, the church needs to be corrected. The church needs to repent. And then, as evangelists are sent out... And prophets are able to speak again. And pastors begin to share the gospel in the true form. And, and, then, and then when the church begins to support Christian businesses, and businesses support Christian media, and media supports the church, and, and when, when we decide to take the kingdom of God seriously, we're going to get some serious results. But as long as we continue to entertain the idea that we can do whatever we want and God's going to be okay with it, we're deceiving ourselves. Guys, we got to go. Uh, it's time to go. Uh, we're about out of time. Make sure you go to comingsoonjesus.org. Please, please, please get a Coming Soon Jesus shirt. Yes. Donate so we can stay on the air. And, and let's say if you're trying to figure out how to bless Coming Soon Jesus and Current FM, go to comingsoonjesus.org forward slash Current FM, and you can support both. When you go to comingsoonjesus.org forward slash Current FM, you are all, we give $10 of every shirt to Current FM. Uh, so make sure that you support. Uh, if you want to support one or the other, we don't care. We just support something. Do something. All right. And Please. then go to penministry.org. Yeah. Yes. Um, also, um, if you were looking for a church, church yeah. a larger church, if you like, you know, not humongous, but kind of a larger church is um, Christian Embassy. Yep. And that's in Chesapeake. And then, as I said earlier, there is um, a church. Hold on, real quick, real, real quick, real quick. About that Christian Embassy. If you are a business owner uh, and you are new to the area, you're a business owner. Christian Embassy is a church that they're a leader's leader. Uh, they're they're uh, you know 
they really are profound in business. I'm telling you, that is a church that you will help you develop your business and keep you in, in your integrity high. That is a great church to go to. Sorry. And I'm just saying for a smaller church that you want to grow with, there's one new in Greenbrier out of Spring Hill, Spring Hill Suites um, across from Greenbrier Mall, and that's called Limitless, and they are absolutely on fire for God there. And then, of course, there's uh, Freedom Fellowship. Make sure you go to Freedom Fellowship, guys. Listen, we're out of time. We love you guys very, very much. Go to comingsoonjesus.org, currentfm.com, and pinministries.org. Uh, that's people in need, uh, ministry.org. And, and um, we, we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in on the live, the YouTube, the Facebook. You know, uh, we thank you guys so much. Look, I need you guys to understand how much you mean to us because... We're, we need people who are willing to give their all, give their all to the kingdom of God. Whether that's being the dad you need to be, the mom you need to be, pray, increase your prayer life, trust God. I'm telling you, God is real. And when you decide to give your all to God, the, God is so awesome that he actually says, test me by my word and see if it's not true. God will save your son. He will save your daughter. You will think your children are so lost, and God will reach in at the last minute and turn them and make them on fire. Like, don't ever think that you, like your situation is too big for God. And I just caught what I just said too, Crystal. By the way, but uh, but it, but God will God will He will leave the ninety nine to save the one. And, like no man left behind. All that stuff. God is amazing. And we gotta we gotta trust him on that level. And what he did for me today, and well, the all every other time that he's done it about the kiosk, he comes through every time, guys. He comes through every time. I, and I, listen, I, I'm not God, so I freak out. So, but but he, but he comes through every time. God is my hero. I'm like Lois Lane, and he's my Superman. You know, like <laughs> oh, he oh. is strength. You know, he, he is strength. God, he, he builds me up. Um, I need you guys to understand something that. We have a God that fights for us. Mm -hmm. Please consider that. We have a God that fights for us. He is not a God that is afraid of any type of warfare. He defends his children. Mm -hmm. Please keep that in mind. Please, please keep that in mind. That we don't have a God that gives up on us. We have a God that that stands by us, right. you know what I mean? We have a God that does it, that, that believes in us, and that's why it's so important for us to share the gospel. That's why it's so important for us to uh, build each other up, edify one another, speak life into one another. Yes, we need to stop um, fighting with each other and being separated by denominations. We need to come together so that we can, you know, um, evangelize and lead the lost to Christ. Right. We are examples for the body of Christ. Let's be those examples. Let's show people how real God is. Let's show people how real God is by the way we love each other and by the way we obey the word of God. Mm -hmm. You guys be good to each other out there. Good night. We love you. All right, guys, we're out of here. Peace out. We love you. Be good to each other out there. All right. How do I cut this thing off now? I have no idea what I'm doing now. All right, so we're on. Uh, let's see. All right, so current FM. I'm Duke, this is Crystal. Um, we hope that we encourage you. We hope we uh, said something that it, it made you made a difference. Uh, we love you guys. So be good to each other out there. Um, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We need that. Uh, we're, we have to get a thousand subscribers. So we're working on